wish I was out there. Let's unretire. Why not? Yes, he's back. Hey, Grandpa! Grandpa? I still got it. Hey, hey, I need that senior discount. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> Unretirement? Who'd be dumb enough to do that? We toil. We sweat. We live. We breathe. We ache. And cry. And laugh. And bleed. We dance. We play. We love. We nourish. We yearn and wish and hope and cherish. We mend, we heal, we repair, we sow. We love this land, it's what we do. Card Prime Center Game of the Week on WQEL 92.7 FM, WQEL.com, and once again, streaming live online worldwide on the OH Report. I'm Josh Stallings, once again alongside Jeff Roberts here at Mohawk High School as the Mohawk Warriors getting set to play host to N10 rival Colonel Crawford Eagles. Senior night here at Mohawk. Mohawk has struggled a little bit, coming in at 1-7 on the year, 1-4 against the N10. Flip-flop those numbers, and you have the Colonel Crawford Eagles at 7-1, and 4-1 and one against the N10 Conference, that lone loss coming against the Cary Blue Devils. Jeff and I will be back with more of the pregame. We'll highlight tonight's spotlights and see what Mohawk and Crawford have to do to leave with a win here tonight. We'll be right back on WQEL and live online on the OH Report. Man, I wish I was out there. Let's unretire. Why not? Yes, he's back. Hey, Grandpa! Grandpa! I still got it! Hey, hey, I need that senior discount. I'm good right here, bro. <laughs> Unretirement? Who'd be dumb enough to do that? We toil, we sweat, we live, we breathe, we ache, and cry, and laugh, and bleed. We dance, we play, we love, we nourish. We yearn and wish and hope and cherish. We mend, we heal, we repair, we sow. We love this land, it's what we do.
Welcome back, everyone, here at beautiful Mohawk High School on really a very pleasant evening here in mid-October. It is yeah. calm. Clouds are, you know, they're, they're fading away, but a very peaceful night here. Good night to throw the football, whatever your offense wants to open up. It's senior night here at Mohawk between the Mohawk Warriors and the Colonel Crawford Eagles. Crawford sitting at second in the N10. Mohawk down the list a little bit ways. Colonel Crawford 7-1. and one. The Warriors come in at one and seven. Jeff, we were here last week as Mohawk lost a tough one on homecoming to Seneca East. Bouncing back, the defense has to improve a little bit. Well, I think that's really been the key all season for them. It's not the fact that Mohawk uh, isn't doesn't have some talent. I mean, ultimately, the record really doesn't reflect how well they've played at times throughout the season. They've lost a lot of really close games. First game of the year, they lost by two points to Calvert, who's still undefeated. So, yeah. I mean, the they team, ranked in Division yeah, 7. Yeah, I mean, this team has got some talent on it, and it's just a matter of kind of piecing it all together. Where the struggle becomes is that ultimately, when it talk about the Mohawk Warriors on defense, they, they really struggle running the football, and or excuse me, stopping the run, and unfortunately, they're going against a Colonel Crawford team. That's their, their strength. Yeah. So, I um, mean, the question will be, can Mohawk step up and, and really be stout in that aspect of the game? If they can, I think we got a really good ball game in front of us. If they can't, it could get away from them. Let's talk about that two-headed monster for Colonel Crawford. Of course, one of the top athletes in the league, and Trevor Vogt, and um, this, we'll take a break here in just a few moments, but Trevor Vogt, he's a quarterback, he's a running back, He's Lamar Jackson of the N10. <laughs> and then they also have Micah Thomas. Micah averaging 7.2 yards per carry, 117 or yeah, 117 attempts for 839 yards, averaging over 105 yards per game, 10 touchdowns on the year. You can't ask for much more out of that. Oh, they're, they're an amazing one-two punch. And then it, it off, opens up a lot of options for Conor McMichael as well. So it ends up becoming a three-headed back. I mean, you got, mm -hmm. you know, Micah Thomas, the, the big bruising back. You got the quarterback vote who might be the fastest player in the league, or at least one of the, the three fastest players in the league. And then you can kind of mix in Conor McMichael. They throw it to, to Ryan McMichael a little bit. So the offense becomes pretty balanced. But ultimately, with all of those skill players for as good as they are, they win it up front. When they do it on the line of scrimmage, they win games. When they can't control the line of scrimmage, they struggle because passing the football is not really what their strength is. They're all about winning it up in the gr up up in the trenches. If they can move people out of the way and open things up for Thomas and Vote, they're impossible to stop. We are in the pregame show here at Mohawk High School, getting set for the Mohawk Warriors and the Colonel Crawford Eagles. Week number nine of the Burkhart Farm Center Game of the Week. You're listening to WQEL and live online on the OH Report. We'll be right back. On behalf of the Mohawk Board of Education and Administration of Mohawk High School, we would like to welcome you to tonight's game between the visiting Colonel Crawford Eagles and your own Mohawk Warriors. The Northern Ten Athletic Conference, in association with the Ohio High School Athletic Association, promotes interscholastic events and excellent sportsmanship. Sportsmanship is an essential part of any athletic competition and is expected from all athletes coaches, officials, and fans. As a fan or spectator, 
of any Northern 10 affiliated school. We want all of us to be an example of positive encouragement while supporting our athletes, coaches, and officials. Our behavior should be positive, respectful, and encouraging of the athletes, coaches, officials, and the game. Back on WQEL and live online on the OH Report, I'm Josh Stallings alongside Jeff Roberts tonight here at Mohawk High School talking about the Colonel Crawford Eagles offense. You mentioned the three-headed monster. You know, they got the power guy, they got the speed guy, and then Trevor Vote. he can do it all. Throw it, pass it, whatever you want. They are big up front, yeah. Jeff. And that is a, somewhat of a problem for Mohawk. They know Mohawk is very physical, yeah. but they don't have a lot of size to match up with Crawford. Here Ultimately, what we have seen out of Mohawk so far this year, even the games that we've been at personally, is they played really competitive. But if there was one game that they really felt outmatched was against Winford, who has some real big size. They really got pushed around a lot in that game, and it hurt them. You can see it throughout the game. It was a 20-point game, and at times they didn't even necessarily feel that close. Um, and... Quite honestly, I mean, you know, Winford's record, you know, is four and four, three and two in the league. They don't necessarily look like, you know, oh, they're one of the best teams in the league. But I'll be honest with you, I was sitting there watching front row for them against uh, Crawford a week ago, and I've I've told people when I left, I'm like, if they played ten times, they'd go five and five. I mean, those these teams are really, really close to each other, and part of it is because of the way they like to be up front. And quite honestly, that's what Mohawk is facing right now. They can't give up Crawford, you know, easy first downs. They yeah. they've got to get stops in the running game early on, especially on the defensive end of the football. If they can keep Crawford in third down and long, they're going to have to throw the football. Their defense is going to have a really good shot tonight. But unfortunately, if Crawford can control up front and they can get eight yards a carry, 15 yards, things like that, it's going to make things really difficult for the quarterback, Ben Bogner, and for the Mohawk Warriors. Bo, as a pass, you talk about that third down conversion. They have to make it challenging. Bo, as a passer this year, 23 of 51, 45.1%, just 408 yards. He will turn it over. He's got six touchdowns, but five interceptions. So he will take a chance. One thing we have seen on the Colonel Crawford lately, Peyton Baker is going to run some quarterbacks tonight, we should see, I would imagine. And he's 12 of 23, a little bit higher, uh, little bit higher completion percentage at 52. He does not throw interceptions, or at least has not yet. He's got three touchdowns, no picks on the year, and that just allows them to spread out their athleticism. Yeah. Get one of the N10 best, best athletes, if not the best athlete in the N10, out on the edge. Give him some more options to maneuver. Well, that's the whole reason that Colonel Crawford does that is they they move themselves um, in that situation because you could say, why don't they just put Baker at quarterback all the time? But ultimately, it allows them to keep Trevor vote and keep pushing him into different positions. It makes it really hard on you know the defenses that they're playing against. And you know, for the Mohawk Warriors, I, I, it provides a, a little extra layer of difficulty because the one thing I saw in the Winford game a week ago, they brought Peyton Baker off the bench. He's totally cold, and they're like, "Hey, it's third down and nine. Go get us a first down, kid." And he was able to do it. I mean, so you know, he's kind of got a steely-eyed mentality about playing the quarterback when he has to go in for vote and it does help when you can take a guy who's all ohio and move him from the quarterback out to the outside where you know all the eyes are going to move to him it's going to open up some bodies someplace else but uh for the mohawk warriors it adds a layer of challenge that you know obviously they went into this knowing we got to be good up front we got to be physical we got to do the types of things that we need to do to be able to be competitive in this game but now we've got some extra wrinkle that colonel crawford's throwing at teams right now that we got to watch out for and it's trevor to vote not playing quarterback it's him playing wide receiver teams making their way onto the field you saw on the screen just a moment ago mohawk we talked about it they have to be physical but offensively we saw it a week ago timely penalties missed opportunities shooting yeah. themselves in the foot is how you know you you word it yeah they can't do that tonight they're a little young they've got to mature a little bit tonight take care of the football keep your hands inside and when you get the opportunity take advantage of it oh don't make any mistake about it for as is downtrodden as some Mohawk fans are probably going to be this year about the way the season's gone being one in seven this team's got five seniors on it it is very young and you know unfortunately young players who end up getting up to the varsity level especially when things are a little overwhelming at first they tend to make mistakes but if they want to be able to play against a team like Colonel Crawford and be able to pick up a victory they can't tonight they got to play their type of ball 
um, smart football, the type of traditional football that we've seen out of Mohawk and coach under Coach Daniel yeah. for a lot of years, which is we're physical, we're tough, we play good defense, we don't make mistakes, and we make teams have to figure out a way to beat us. If they can do that tonight, again, these are the things that will keep them in the game. If they make a lot of mistakes, it's going to be a problem because ultimately when it comes down to it, if you're looking at it player for player, who's got more athletes, well, Colonel Crawford does. Mm. There's no doubt about it. But Colonel Crawford will have the type of thing that if they make mistakes, their athletes can probably dig them out of it a little bit. Right. If Mohawk does, it's going to put them in a, a terrible situation because, you know, outside of, you know, quarterback Ben Bogner, they don't run the football terribly well, right. and they end up having to throw the ball a lot. And, you know, will they be able to do that effectively, consistently tonight? I think they're going to be able to move the ball a little bit. But are they going to be able to do it play in, play out, game in, game out? Um, you know, that's another challenge, and it's going to be a difficult one for the Warriors. We will see the dual threat quarterback in Ben Bogner running the offense to start this game as Colonel Crawford won the toss. They deferred to the second half. So we will see that Mohawk offense out on the field first without one of their top guys in Kane Heyman. Kane's missed a couple weeks now. A big-time junior for them. Plays inside linebacker, wide receiver, a speedster. They are without him once again. So guys are going to have to step up. Yeah. It's senior night, but you're going to need more than your seniors tonight against these Eagles. Well, if you look at what has been a trouble for Mohawk when you talk about losing Kane Heyman, it's not just his receiving on the outside. Um, he was their deep threat, their speed guy, but also they would move him into the backfield. And outside of Bogner, Heyman was the only player on this team who carries the ball with any type of regularity, who carried the ball with any type of regularity, who averaged more than four yards a carry. Everybody else who gets carries tends to average about three, three and a half. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Bogner gets five, but that's a lot of scrambles, getting away, you know, things like that. It's not always designed runs. So, you know, losing Heyman hurts them on their running attack and their passing attack. And it's one of those things that, you know, Mohawks trying to figure out their way around because, you know, when you're small schools like we see week in and week out, you just can't lose your best athletes and expect to be the same football team. It just doesn't work that way. We are set for week number nine here in Sycamore. The Mohawk Warriors and the Colonel Crawford Eagles teeing it up. Braxton Morton for Colonel Crawford. Back deep, Braden Chester and Brant Kirian for the Warriors. And we have a whistle, and they're going to blow this opening kickoff dead. Yep. It's going to be offsides against Colonel Crawford. So... That should help the Mohawk field Absolutely. position to get this thing going. Well, and it does help, especially because Colonel Crawford has one of the rare kickers that you get in small schools. He's got a Morton, boot. Who, who can kick the ball quite far. Mm -hmm. Like So um, it's not like, all right, he's going to pop it up in the air, and I'm going to receive it at the 20 and get it out to the 30, 35, maybe even further. He, he can kick it down to the 10, 5-yard line. So every 5 yards that they push him back is really helpful. Crawford tonight in their all-white, white tops, white bottoms, white socks. They got the black caps, Mohawk, all black tonight. They got the red stripe on the shoulders and the knees. Considering last week, uh, Colonel Crawford, I was seeing there, they were in their camouflage jerseys, mm -hmm. and you could barely see the numbers. I love this white on black. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm all about it. Morton booms <laughs> one downfield, backing up and grabbing in. He's carrying at the seven. Kirian up the near side, makes one man miss, hurdles another. Kirian at the 25, goes down at the 28-yard line after a couple missed tackles. Pretty decent starting field position for Ben Bogner and the Warriors. We'll see what Coach Daniel has for the first drive of the ballgame. You see that, though? I mean, Morton, you know, he, his leg's so good that when Kirian caught that, he not only had to back up, but he had to catch the ball over his head. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, it was going to sail over, it, over his head. I mean, you know, we don't see that a lot of high school football for us. Mohawk will break the huddle. They'll go three receivers to the right, one to the left. Near side is 24, Andrew Woodland. Woodland, 5'11", junior, trips to the right. It's going to be Bogner around the left side on the first play from scrimmage. Bogner making two guys miss, and Bogner is up close to a first down. He'll be marked about a two yards shy, but a couple nice blocks. If yep. he gets that edge seal, if Woodland can hold that block a little bit longer, he could be still going, but a nice gain on first down, first play of the game. Yeah, basically that's a play where Bogner, when he's running, it's you know it's on the edge defender to kind of seal off that corner, and Bogner was able to kind of just get around him, just foot speed. It, you know, it becomes a defensive lineman and gets the quarterback, and once he broke the corner, some good blocking on the edge gets him through. Trips again to the wide side. Bogner claps for it. He's going to take it. Quarterback ISO straight up the gut. 
just trying to pick up the first down and he got it. He's gonna be close. Far side officials walking yeah, in. It looks like he's gonna mark him shy. Near side guy will take a half step back and they're not gonna give it to him. It's gonna be or third and about a half yard. Yeah, I liked where he was at, but uh, they saw him down a little bit shy from that. And, and again, you could see kind of what Bogner was thinking. I mean, he makes that cut. It's almost the exact same run play, except instead of going to the edge, there he saw, I'm going to cut up the middle because I'm just going to get that first down. But uh, they got him a little shy. We'll see what they can do on third and short. Back on the left hip of Bogner. They're going to give it to him straight up the gut. He's got the first down by just enough. Driven back, but... First, or excuse me, yep. forward progress should give it to him. I did not yeah, see. Yeah, number three. That's, that's number, be... yeah, that's Magi. Yeah. <laughs> Elias Magalanus. We're going to call him Magi. I appreciate that. We're going to make it easy on her. So we're that's working right. smarter, not harder here in week number nine. <laughs> it only took us this long to figure it out, but hey. Yeah, not a, not a lot of space there, a lot of yards, but enough for to get the first down. Now, Brant Kirian will run it in. Receivers for Mohawk, typically Nick Golig, Braden Chester, and Woodland. And then they'll shuffle guys in. Golig had a nice game last week, catching a touchdown. Here's Bogner, first pass of the ball game. Going to sling it. Pass is complete. And he's got a four-yard pickup over there. That is Golig. So one for one, Bogner. Golig a little slow to get up. I think he yeah. got the wind knocked on him. He was hit pretty hard. But he is a sure-handed receiver for the Warriors. Well, the defender was breaking in on him already, Ryan McMichael. He was looking in the backfield, and he could see where Bogner was going with the ball. So he he came up on Goling, and he got – I mean, it was actually great defense. He got there right when the ball did. It was just a good catch by Goling to not drop it. Trips below us. Woodland goes wide to the right on second and six. Here's Bogner from the gun. He's going to run it. Quarterback ISO again, and he'll pick up maybe two feet. Yeah, maybe a yard, but – uh. Again, another play that sort of designed where he can break it outside, but I think he's looking at it going, yeah, I don't, I don't see it happening there, especially as you can see Walker Kramer, linebacker, uh, coming up, and he's like, all right, I'm looking at Magalanis having to try to block him one-on-one. -on -one. Eh, don't think so. Going to go ahead and cut it inside, see what I can get. Going to make up a third and five. Crawford going so far with a 3-3-5 challenging Mohawk to control the line of scrimmage. Bogner wants to throw on third and long. Steps up, now backs away off his oh, back. Foot throws an interception center of the field, Caden Bruner. Bruner goes towards his sideline, and Bruner gets the first turnover of the night, and Crawford with the football in Mohawk territory. And you look at the replay here, Jeff, he had a pretty decent pocket. Yep. Probably could have kept the play alive a little bit longer, but Bruner, great job as a middle linebacker, reading the eyes and floating into the passing lane. Well, unfortunately, Bogner didn't make a good decision. You know, we mentioned, in, you know, for those watching on the OH report, we had kind of some player spotlights, and we talked defensively about Bruner. He's been mm -hmm. playing really well, uh, the junior stepping up on the defensive side of the football. And right there, like you said, he was just kind of covering middle of the field, and he slid right in front of that pass. I don't think there was any way Bogner was going to have any chance to make a completion there. Here's the Eagle offense. First and 10, it's Micah Thomas. Thomas, their second leading rusher behind Boat, takes the handoff, plows forward for four. Yeah, good to three. They'll bring it second, excuse me, second and seven. Nine minutes here in the first quarter. Of course, tonight we do have two games coming to you over on WBCO AM 1540 and 107.5. It's the McDonald's of Bucyrus and Gallion Game of the Week, Buckeye Central and Bucyrus with Jared Moore, Tim Byrie. Here's Boat. Fakes oh the handoff. Boat uh -oh. coming around the corner. Boat picks up a block, Bye -bye. and we will see you. No, flag comes down, and that's a good call. Block in the back will bring that back, but, man, Trevor Boat can fly. Yep, exactly. Once he got to the edge, I was like, the hole's huge. There's nobody getting him. And, and it was a receiver kind of coming downfield. They're going to get him on the hold. Um, I think it was McMichael just kind of blocking off on the safety, and uh, they're going to say as the safety was trying to get off of him, he didn't. He didn't release. Throws his hands up, wasn't me? Wasn't I, me? I gotta be honest with you, I don't think he was even necessary. I think no. you know, he could have just basically said, All right, you know, I'm gonna take my chances that your guy can't run down my guy in the open field. But uh, you know, McMichael trying to block and get the hold. So uh they'll move it back from where the spot of the foul yeah, ten was. Ten yards from the spot of the foul, so should be a first down. Yep. Would have been a full one yard touchdown run. Instead, um, they'll drop it down to the 30-yard line. So following the interception, Colonel Crawford has it at the 30-yard line of Mohawk and already 
a couple successful plays, even with the hold. Yep. Vote in the gun. Back on his left hip, that's Micah Thomas. Motion man goes right to left to trips. Tight end right side. Mohawk showing blitz. They got a five-man front. No high safety right now for the Warriors. Play clock down to seven. Vote calls for it. He's got a lead blocker. Micah Thomas out in front. Throws his body. And Vote trying to stretch it. Now shuts it down. And he's going to be knocked down at the 25-yard line. And there you saw a little bit better outside contain out of Mohawk. That's what they lacked on that first one. Luckily, the penalty brought it back. Yep. But they have got to keep Vote inside. Funnel him to your friend. No no question. You can't get in a foot race in the open field with Trevor Vote. Um it's not going to be a losing proposition for Mohawk. It's going to be a losing proposition for almost everybody. Mm -hmm. You've got to keep him inside the tackles somehow. And if he does get to the outside, you've got to swarm. You've got to get a lot of bodies out there. But don't try to make it a thing where you're trying to just catch him in the open field. Heavy set for the Eagles. Thomas. They go to Thomas. Thomas straight up the gut and a nice hole. We'll give him a first down inside the 20. They're in the red zone for the first time at the 16, 17-yard line. Yeah, Micah Thomas, not the type of back who necessarily is going to just break away with 70 yard runs with full speed he just is very good at finding holes he's big and you know he he can break arm tackles things like that does a really nice job moving the pile another heavy package for the eagles they'll motion across that's smith vote's going to turn hand off it is connor mcmichael this time mcmichael getting his first carry and he's got a nice chunk of yardage they'll mark him at the 10. So a seven-yard pickup for McMichael on his first touch tonight. And this big, physical offensive front for Crawford is plowing the road right now. Yep. Mohawk's going to have to respond with some physicality of their own. I get it, you We can see it even from the press box, the size difference. I mean, you know, when you're looking at Levi Johnson out there at 6'5", 245 pounds for the mm. tackle position, how many teams have guys like that that can match up? You know, it's real tough. Crawford going to challenge him again with the heavy package. This time it's Thomas. Thomas breaking tackles to the outside. Thomas looking for the pylon. Yeah. And Thomas, no signal. He was real close to the sideline. The question is, did they get him pushed out? And there it is. There it Sean is. Crawford. Micah Thomas. The so, physical back throwing a few stiff arms. A little bit of a shifty shake there. And into the end zone for six with 6.49 to go here in the first quarter. That didn't take them long, Jeff. No, exactly. They were literally ran right on the side that I was just talking about, where you are talking about that left end um, where you got the big bodies over there, Levi Johnson. And he just kind of seals people off. And uh, you get some lead blockers out in front. And sure enough, Thomas, they, they get him around the three yard line, but they can't push him out of bounds. And Morton's extra point actually dings off yes. the side the sidebar something you don't see very often clangs off the upright it is no good so with 6:49 to go here in the first quarter in sycamore it's the eagle six and the warriors zero QEL and streaming live online on the OH Report. I'm Josh Stallings alongside Jeff Roberts. In the first quarter here from Sycamore, Morton going to send another boomer downfield. This time it'll be Chester from the three. He's got a couple guys in front. Chester shakes one at the 20. Chester plows over the 25, goes down at the 27-yard line. So for a deep kick, pretty decent return for Chester, yep. and once again, Mohawk will start right around the same spot at the 27. You know, when we saw Colonel Crawford a lot of weeks ago, we both said that this team, if they win at the line of scrimmage, they're impossible to beat. But boy, if you can stop them there, you got a real chance against them. 
Carey was able to do it. They really struggled offensively. Nobody else has really had a lot of success being able to do it. You can see it early in this game. And Mohawk got one good run. We were able to pick up a first down on offense. And then, uh, sure enough, they put some pressure on. Bad interception by Bogner. Go the other way. Total domination up front. And they're in the end zone quickly. Double tight. One back on the right hip of Bogner. Wants to throw man-on-man -man coverage. Woodland beat his man. That's a hold, but yeah, no ball. Official right there staring at it, too. But I think Woodland would have beat him by two steps, yep. but I guess we'll call it good coverage by the DB. Sure. I don't want to be, you know. Yeah, it was Foy, but Foy over there in man coverage. We're actually seeing it here on the OH report. And you can see he's got that inside hand right there on his hip jersey. Yeah. Um, and, again, officials sitting there watching it, but, you know, sometimes they'll they'll let him get away let with play a it out. And, uh, you know, got up there, was able to put his hand up in the air and kind of interrupt the pass, so. Nice job right there by Foy. Empty backfield, quads left. Quick pass near side. Up the left sideline is number five. That is Brant Kirian. Made one man miss at the line, but they're going to get a flag, up. and that'll be a hold. You know what? It was, White Hat won't wave that thing. They're going to get him on the hold or the block in the back. It's going to be right there. Number, you know, it was, uh, sure enough, number 41, uh, Tyler Smith, uh, the defender coming up. And like you said, Chester coming up, just kind of catching him on that back shoulder. Um, able to spring them free, and I guess they're going to call it a hold instead. I getting the replay, we can see it wasn't really a hold; it was a block in the back. But you know, still that yardage will work against yeah. Mohawk. Another penalty that'll back it up to yeah. the 22-yard line. 6:26 to go here in the first. That makes it a second and 15. And again, you know, for a Mohawk team, uh, you know, knowing that our their backs are against the wall, this is not a not an easy situation for their offense. Doubles formation here on second and 15. Clock winds. Bogner in the gun looking at a three-man front. They're going to bring an outside linebacker in his face. Bogner got rid of it just in time, but over the head of the intended receiver. That was Caleb Bish. Yep. And Bish, luckily back in the lineup tonight for Mohawk. He missed a week, if not two, I believe. Um, but that's an, a big return for Mohawk. Yep. And you it's got to get him going. Unfortunate. Like, that's a, actually a, a well-orchestrated play. Bogner, with the pressure in his face, just not able to connect with Bish. If he does, he's going to turn. He's going to get 10 to, 10 to 15 yards. He's going to be pretty close to the first down. Everybody else was blitzing on that side, so a lot of space. Crawford going to rush very wide and a perfect play call on the screen. Up the near side, making a man miss up the sideline and picking up a lot is Braxton Frisch. So Frisch gets a lot of those penalty yards back up to the 32-yard line. And Crawford went extremely wide there with their defensive end. They handled him, forced him outside. Two guys had to double-team the nose, but a great play call on the on the screen. And it'll be fourth down. Yeah, but it, I don't think Coach Daniel's going to punt. They need five, so it's a tough yeah. situation, maybe even six. So it's a tough first down to get, but they're going to give a shot at it. Oh, Nose jumped, but the official doesn't call it. Must not have crossed into the neutral zone. So now Bogner will back up and probably do a little pooch punt. Yeah, the quick kick, and a pretty nice one at that. Bogner's going to drop it at the 40-yard line and grabbed immediately by Brant Kirian. So again, the Mohawk drive stalls, and Colonel Crawford will get pretty good starting field position for their second possession with 6.01 in the ball, or in the first, excuse me. And again, that's the reason why the penalty, you know, the block in the back uh, that, that they call the hold was so hurtful. Because I'll be honest, th they threw that little screen pass. They had one that they missed because, you know, of the blitz on Bogner. He just couldn't connect. But when he finally did at one play later, and it goes for nine yards, hitting it out to Frisch, if there, if that's, a, uh, you know, a third down and, and nine, or excuse me, a third down and ten, and it's fourth and one, I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Daniel goes for it. You know, I I think he knows the type of game he's in. So, Boat going to fake the handoff, run it himself, and Boat stretching around the left side, and he's got nine. And one thing Mohawk is doing that's kind of surprising me, Jeff, is uh, brought down by Woodland. Uh, they are manning these guys up on the outside. Yeah. The defensive backs for Mohawk are showing man coverage, and that's one thing we talked about. These athletes for Crawford are very fast, very quick and elusive, 
Mohawk going to try and match up with them? You basically have to when you're not big up front. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's not because you want to. It's because you don't have any other options. Keep guys in the box against Boat. They're going to run it with Thomas. Up the gut, and Thomas right through the A gap on the left side. He's got an easy first down yep. inside Mohawk territory at the 44-43 yard line. Yeah, another very good run right there. Just, you know, very simply moving the ball down the field. And again, you know, when you're out, gunned up front in size and, and things like that you have to look at your defensive backs and say i know it ain't fair but you got to get these guys one-on-one because i need all my linebackers and linemen and safeties going looking at the backfield three tight ends again they go to the fullback and that yeah. is thomas. micah thomas yep thomas they is also very had Connor mcmichael in the backfield yeah thomas is built like a fullback mm-hmm. he, you know and he, and he kind of runs like one i mean it's not you know he'll he'll take it around the edge a little bit for the most part he just kind of goes right up the gut and uh you know uses the big bodies in front of him to clear out some space for him well 5 10 2 10 right two receivers will bunch close on the left side with a wing lone receiver to the right boat gonna fake the handoff and carry it himself following the lead blocker and he's got a gain of seven. There's a flag down. Right flag there comes over on that side. of a hold. Yep. In a hold. I think you can call that on Crawford. It is. Golig brought him down, and it should bring up a second. And 10 yards from the spot of the foul be about second and 13. Yeah, probably lose five from where they were at. So that is the first, or excuse me, two penalties now on each team, I believe. Yep. Tell you what, still second down, but again for Craw- you know for Crawford, as I said before the game started, this is potentially still manageable for them because of just you know the skill players, the athletes they have. They get boat in the open field. What's 13, 14 yards? But you know, this is where Mohawk has to make a stop. Put him in a passing down here for third down. Lucas Foy is going to split wide oh, to the right and a Michael. quick double handoff to McMichael going back on the counter, and McMichael wins a foot race to the end zone. What a play call. The quick counter, one hand up, right back to McMichael, and he is a speedster around the outside. McMichael blew it away for six. And that's the reason why McMichael has such amazing numbers on the season. If you look real closely at his running game, people don't talk about him that much, but ultimately, you know, he's averaging over 10 yards a carry. And Who'd take that? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's his eighth touchdown run. And it's because everybody stares at the other two guys, Thomas and Vogt. Morton's second extra point attempt is up, and it is good. So he is now one for two on the night. It is 13-0 with 4.29 to go here in the first quarter in Sycamore. You're listening to the Burkhart Farm Center Game of the Week on WQEL and streaming live online on the OH Report. We'll be right back. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. report it is 13-0 here in the first quarter colonel crawford coming to sycamore and the offense has shown what they can do on the ground so far touchdown from thomas touchdown from mcmichael and now morton's going to send another one deep it'll be near side kirian fields it at the seven kirian coming up field at the 20 shucks and ran right into the back of one of his blockers and he's going to be whistled down and they'll give him forward progress to the 21. You know, this is one of the biggest challenges when you're a team like Mohawk and you're playing a team like Colonel Crawford. 
ultimately, you know, this team kind of outmatches us a little bit, and we want to minimize possessions. We don't want it to be a, a, a shootout because mm-hmm. we're not, we're probably not going to win a, a shootout against a team that's bigger, stronger, faster. But in order to kind of dominate, you know, and be able to eat the clock a little bit, you got to be able to run the football. And that's something they don't do terribly well. So it really puts them in a tough situation. Trips to the right side, one to the left for Bogner. Bogner's got a back on his hip. He's going to use him as a blocker. Bogner coming near side around the left edge, lowers the shoulder, plows into the sideline, and he's got a gain of three on first down. Yep. Good block there by Moggy to get him a couple yeah, extra because he could have been knocked down for a loss. Absolutely. You know, it's actually, you know, Connor McMichael who just scored the touchdown coming up, you know, from his spot to be able to make a play. But like you said, lead blocker coming through, does a nice job getting in his face, bringing him in the corner. And that's where they've had their success, running around that left side, giving the lead blocker in front of them. But they think they just gave it up with some a procedure penalty. No, it's going to be on Crawford. Lining up in the neutral zone. Yep. Didn't didn't see where the lineup was. And that's going to put Mohawk in a much better situation. Now they're at second and one. And, you know, offensive coordinator can kind of, all right, let's dial some stuff up here because I got I got a couple of plays. I only got to get one yard. Second and one from the 31. 418 to go here in the first quarter on WQEL. And the OH report trips to the right side. It's Woodland wide to the left, and it's Caleb Bish in the backfield with Bogner. Bogner claps for it, has it. Wants to throw. Now he's going to oh, tuck it, and run. he is nope. swallowed up in the backfield couple guys back there, Caden Bruner. Really everybody in the front five for Colonel Crawford getting back in the face of Bogner and bringing him down. Yeah, That'll be a three-yard loss. And now, like you just said, you got a couple different options there, but that was second and one. Yeah. Now you're back to third and four. Exactly. It's not a good situation now, you know, after the last play. I mean, it, they really could have done a lot of different things, but unfortunately that play call puts them in a bad spot. Again, Crawford's going to split the ends wide. Two D tackles tight in the middle. Ball is overthrown. Receiver, that's Golig looking for a holding penalty. It was almost intercepted by the safety, Trevor Boat. Yeah, it just sails innocently to the turf and we'll be no able to penalty. See the replay here on the OH report. And, he uh, just sailed that one, and well, maybe and some that, miscommunication. Well, I, do, I think the, the pass wasn't great, but, you know, AG on defense, definitely. You know, they're, they're holding the jerseys a little bit on Mohawk. I mean, but if officials aren't going to call it. You can do it, too. You can do it. Like that's, At least you'd hope. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, just got to make it not quite so obvious. You know? mm-hmm. So, Braden Chester in, and he will line up to punt. High snap, Chester hauls it in. And let's go of an end-over-end kick. Hits at the 40. Takes a high hop. It's going to be returned by Vote. Vote on the bounce. Taking it up the left side. Approaches the sideline. And Vote wisely will just run out of bounds. Why take a hit? Gets a nice return. And they will start this drive right at the 50. So more great field position for the Colonel Crawford Eagles. As Mohawk cannot sustain a drive. Take some time off the clock. And at least make Crawford go a ways, yeah. but instead they're at the 50 first and 10. Well, they're at the 50 because, unfortunately for Mohawk, Trevor Vogt is really just that good, you know, mm-hmm. especially as a returner where he's been all Ohio. Um, but, you know, that one hop, he's got a defender who's literally a yard away from him at that point in time, and he just sees him, and he runs in the other direction. He goes, oh, okay, you're there. Most I'm coaches the would say get out of get there. Out, get out of there, but you know what? He can run away from everybody, get to the corner, and get a first down or get 15 yards. Pistol formation for Vote, going to hand to the back, and that is McMichael. Oh, or, Thomas. no, excuse me, Micah Thomas. And Thomas, that was a low snap. That's a play, maybe even an yeah. RPO. He's going to read that defensive end, wisely gives it to Thomas, and Thomas makes the most out of it, picks up four. Yep. Nice tackle by Chester there. Uh, that was kind of a one on one. Had to go low, got Thomas right around the ankle. If he misses that tackle, it's going to go for some pretty nice yards. Parker Weithman comes wide to the right. Two guys bunched up close on the left side. Vote fakes the handoff. Vote coming near. And Vote is going to get the first down over the 40 and down to the 36 yard line. Patient running there by Vote. Yep. And he's got another first down. He's always sort of kind of running, though, with this thought of like, all right, I just am looking for the one block that's going to spring me for something huge. I mean, because in the moment he sees it, 
he's got that one step acceleration quickness that he's gone. So um, it becomes real important for the defenders to, to not get blocked off the ball too badly wherever he's running. Backs in a three-point stance behind Boat under center. Goes to McMichael. McMichael oh, started up the gut. Now he's going to bounce it outside, show the wheels. McMichael is at the five. McMichael slung down inside the five-yard line at the two. Thought he could find pay dirt for a second time, but he's going to be slung down just short of the goal line. Yep. Got a great vision there. Started up the middle. Then, hey, there's nobody out here. Yep. A lot of open space on that left side. And McMichael with a nice chunk of yardage. And the only reason he's not in the end zone is because Goldwing took a good angle for yep. him. That's it. Um, you know, he was playing kind of deep in the safety position, and he realized, oh, boy, he's going to go. And he was like, I'm going to just chase him downfield at the end. I'm going to see if I can get him before he gets to the end zone. Otherwise, he's in right now. Great run by McMichael. Same formation. Tight end right, tight end and a wing left. Spins, flag flies. That's going to be a false start. Yep. So... Crawford trying to get a little bit of an early jump with first and goal. They'll back him up. They'll still be within the 10-yard line. They'll mark it at the 7-and-a-half. I imagine Crawford will stay with the heavy package. They're not going to mess around. Nope. I mean, they got first down from the 8, and the way they're running the football, no reason to make any changes. Double tight with a wing right. McMichael, Thomas in the backfield, and he's going to spin, give it off. Micah Thomas, Thomas pushing, and the defensive line with a nice stand there, gain of about two yards. Yep, maybe he got a Things got congested in the middle there. Yard or two, like you said. But good job by Mohawk just kind of following everybody inside. But, you know, this is where the challenge lies for the Warriors, you know, when they pack everybody tight inside, it works if the run is going inside, but it leaves everything on the offside open. Um, so, it, you know, it's kind of pick your poison. Second and six from the six. They'll shuffle a guy left to right. Boat going to spin. Hand off Thomas. Thomas keeps his feet and drives his way to the two-yard line. Yep. Thomas picks up four, and that's just power football right there. He got brought down on the play by Braylon Mulholland. But Thomas showing that lower half strength. He was met and then able to spin that tackle and pick up another two yards. Yep. Unfortunately, he's got a defender low and one high, but the one low lost grip. So now it's it's just upper body strength. And mm -hmm. Thomas at 210 is tough to bring down in that situation. Heavy package. This time they'll toss it out to Thomas. McMichael lead blocking. It. And Thomas untouched into the end zone. His second of the night. Second of the first quarter. And with 11 seconds to go in the first quarter, it's 19-0 to Crawford. Yeah, not to waste any time there. Um, and again, they're, you know, they do the pitch that time, the Thomas. A um, little different look. He's usually between the tackles. But he's got the lead blockers in front of him. They seal off the edge. And you can see, even though he's not the speedster that you get at a vote or even to counter McMichael, Thomas got enough wheels to get around the outside when he's got that type of blocking. Boy to hold, vote, or excuse me, Morton to kick. Extra point is up, and it is good. So with 11 seconds to go in the first quarter, Crawford leading this one 20 to zero. You're listening to the Burkhart Farm Center Game of the Week on WQEL, streaming live online on the OH Report. We'll take a timeout. We'll be right back with the Warriors and the football. Maybe we thought they were better than what they were. Roberts with you, also online on the OH Report. 20-0 to zero here in the first quarter. 
Morton again, a boomer downfield. Jeez. Kirian at the one. What a kick. He'll bunch him up center of the field. Kirian looking for a block. Springs him over the 20 and then driven back to the 20. And yeah, they'll give him forward progress up to the 24-yard line. That'll leave three seconds on the clock here in the first quarter. Update from around the league. Seneca East and Winford tied at zero. Buckeye and Bucyrus are tied at eight. And then Carey with the lead on Upper Sandusky, 13-0. So Mohawk with their fourth possession of the night. Interception on the first and then two straight punts. We'll see if Bogner and this offense can get something going. Maybe stringing together a couple first downs. But if you give Crawford another possession to start the second quarter, and you're going to be hurt pretty Absolutely. quick. Quads right side to run a jail screen. Pass is complete. Streaking, but what a flow by this Colonel Crawford defense. They weren't fooled. And just a two-yard pickup over there to Golick. And that will do it for the first quarter here in Sycamore. It's all Colonel Crawford here after one. They lead this thing 20 to zero in week number nine. We'll take a break. We'll be right back after this. It will be Mohawk with the football trailing 20 to 0. Some other games tonight outside the N10. Highland at Clear Fork, River Valley is at Galleon, Shelby's at Ontario, Marion Harding at Pleasant, Loudonville at East Knock. Trips left on second and nine. Lone receiver to the right side. Bogner has it. Hands off to the back. I believe that was Bish. Nope, that was Moggy. Yeah. Elias Magalanis, 5'11", 175-pound junior. Picked up about three yards, so it'll be third and a long seven. And once again, you know, Mohawk, the struggles continue offensively. Mm -hmm. Only one offensive uh, first down at this point in time. Bogner alone in the backfield this time. We've got a wing left. Bogner's going to roll that way. It's going to throw to the flats. Pass is complete at the 30. Pushing up field and getting down to the 34. It'll be about a yard shy. That was complete to Brant Kirian. Kirian's first reception of the night. Kirian with a nice cut back after he caught the ball. Defenders are right there, and he splits them. I mean, he there's two on his right, one to the left, and he just kind of makes a little move. They overran the play a little bit. We're able to get a first down. It's a good play. Over on WBCO tonight with Jared Moore, Tim Byrie. It is Buckeye and Bucyrus. Another empty backfield as they go quads to the wide side. That's right for Ben Bogner. Bogner going east to west on your radio dial. Sets up in the pocket, wants to throw. Now he's going to be flushed. And that well, must have got outside the pocket. Yep. No intentional grounding, just throwing it away. Coach well, he, Daniel telling Ben, step up in the pocket and look downfield. Don't immediately vacate. He well, had a nice pocket there. He did. I mean, it was actually pretty good blocking. It was just mm -hmm. a three-man rush. And I thought the offensive line did a pretty nice job. But he had a lot of guys going on deep routes. And he was trying to kind of let them get there. And by the time, you know, he... He did. They did. Those three guys were getting in his face, and they're pretty tall up front and in his face, and he just kind of was bailing out at that moment. Three right, one left. Bogner on the quarterback. Iso now bouncing it, looking for the edge. Not a lot there, Jeff. Just two yards, maybe, for Bogner. 
And now it'll be third and about eight. Yep. 10.25 in the second quarter here in Sycamore. Of course, don't forget to call in after the game tonight. It's Friday Night Phone Board with the legend Davey Jones. Davey back in studio getting set for another edition of the Friday Night Phone Board. Call him up, 419-562-2222, toll-free 1-888-843-0024. Bogner on third and eight. We'll send Woodland to the left side. He's in the gun and wants to throw. Three-man rush. Flush to the right side. Bogner, eyes downfield, looking, heaving, working his way back to the oh, ball. Right on the sideline on the comeback route, incomplete. He wanted Kirian. Kirian needed to realize he was flushed. Of course, that's hard to do as a receiver yeah. running your route. But he turns around, starts to work back like you would want, but just not enough on that football and a little bit too far outside. Yeah, unfortunately... What the reason for it is, like you said, Kirian actually is further downfield on the route. He realizes his quarterback's in trouble. He starts coming back. But Bogner realizes that, you know, he's got the defender still on his hip a little bit, but he's also got a linebacker who's kind of covering a little bit more interior. So he was trying to put it as close to the sideline as possible where only his receiver could have a shot at it. Unfortunately, let him just a little too far. So another drive comes up empty, but a nice punt by Chester. And this will be the worst starting field position for the Eagles in this first half as it's all the way to the 22-yard line. Yeah, actually, Chester on that punt, if you were watching him real closely, he stood there with the ball in his hands for at least a good second, second half, maybe even two seconds before he punted the ball. He was just looking. He was like, I'm getting no pressure, so I'm going to sit here, and I'm just going to let my coverage get down the field. Mm -hmm. um, and then when finally one defender started coming at him, he was like, all right, now I'll punt. Um, but just kind of use that time to let the defense get into uh, position to get the coverage team down there. Smart move by the senior. Now the Warriors need a stop. 20 to 0, 941 to go. First half. New ba Jersey back there. Back on either side of the QB. That is Baker. And Thomas. Thomas stretching it near side to the left. Thomas throws the stiff arm. He's got a first down and a pickup of 12. Yep. And there is just nobody out there to bring him down. Well, you know what the reality is, is that's, you know, kind of a slow run, or at least it feels that way because they're going to the wide side of the field. And by the time he gets to the sideline, it, you know, he's running 20 plus yards to get there. But, um, you know, it's just slow movement up the field. It's not, you know, it's not totally north and south. There's a little east and west in that, but he's got so much space that, you know, there's no reason that he just can't push it up and down the field. Uh, easy first down. Tackle made by Woodland. He'll match up top of the screen one on one. Baker wants to throw. Going to throw the deep route in that one-on-one -on -one cover. Underthrown ball. Boat goes up for it and mistimed, misplayed. Kind of a duck. Yeah, but I'll be honest with you. That's, uh, unfortunately, Baker was just kind of trying to put a lot of touch on the ball, and he tried to put it way up in the air. Just trying but, to make rain with but, that throw. You know what? But it, but it hung up there a little bit too much um, because initially, if you look at the route from the get-go, Vote had a step or two. Yeah. Like, so if he just throws kind of a sharp line, you got to throw him open. And, and, you know, he's going to run right into it. It's going to be a touchdown, but he left it up too high. Double tight. Baker again. This time he's going to hand off Thomas. Thomas swim move with the football, and he's got six up over the 40. They'll mark him at the 40 and a half yard line. Great move over that defensive end. If, if you're Mohawk, you want to try and keep them in the tackles. If you get them out in space, they will run away from you. Force them back inside where you have help. And that's at least what they did there. Gain a five. Well, and once again, you can see even on a run like that, what Crawford has had for several years and the different guys playing running back is just patience. They wait mm -hmm. for those blocks to develop. Um, you know, it's not necessarily an attack. It's just slow build. Baker McMichael. will hand off Tom, or no, McMichael. Oh, boy. And McMichael showing the burners again. McMichael He's up the gone. sideline. He's gone. See you later. Touchdown number two for him. McMichael had one for 47. That one, 60. 60. Yep. Unbelievable. You just see it. It's just, you know. The hole is not just impressive, but watch McMichael's eyes. You know, as he's coming around that edge, you'll see he knows exactly when to make a break. He's, he's got some good blocking. He's got space. But right about 10 yards, he sees where he's at, and he's like, okay, I'm going to now break this to the outside, and I'm going to just take a foot race down. It's Colt Goling and me, and I'm going to beat him there. 
Morton bangs it through. It is 26 to 0 with 8.17 to go, or excuse me, 27 to 0 with 8.17 to go here in the first half. McMichael with over 100 yards on just two touchdown runs, and he's having himself quite the first half, as is the Colonel Crawford offense. 8.17 to go here in Sycamore in the first half. We'll take a timeout. We'll be right back. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. It's report. It's been the Colonel Crawford Show here on the team tonight in Sycamore. They lead with 27-0 with 817 to go in the first half. Quick reminder that after the game, we'll be choosing a player for both Mohawk and Colonel Crawford as our Lewis Family McDonald's players of the game. Each of them will get a gift certificate from the Lewis Family McDonald's located all throughout North Central and Northwest Ohio. So we do thank them for that award and looking forward to that award giving up after the game. Kirian, Chester back deep. This time Morton will kind of send a short one downfield, fielded by the up man on the far side, working his way through the traffic. And he's going to go down at the 29-yard line. That was Frisch on the return. And I think Morton just decided to take it easy. Yeah. He put the about 70%, punch it down to the 20. And I do think there are times that in games like this that, you know, remember Colonel Crawford's already clinched their playoff spot. They're actually, you know, actually clinched a home playoff spot for the mm -hmm. first game already. And there are times where coaches will be like, well, let's try something. I mean, yeah. get your opportunities here in games like this. Start preparing for when games get, a little tighter later in the season, especially when you get into that playoffs space. Trips to the right side here for the Mohawk Warriors. Try and get something going offensively. Bogner's going to sling it out. He's got Kieran at the 25. Kieran makes one miss, goes through the arm tackle, then gets hit hard from behind. Tackle made by 69. That is Lane Reich. We talked about him in the pregame. One of the bigger and better defenders for this Colonel Crawford Eagle defense and really one of the better defenders in the N10. He has a lot he spends a lot of time in the backfield. Yep. But makes a big play there running him down. It'll be second and six. I'll just say Elaine Reich's a stud. He I'll is. I'll tell you what, from that defensive end position, he's nearly impossible to impossible to block one on one endless motor gets up the field and you can see he comes back in the defense if the play, play gets behind him, he doesn't quit. He'll keep coming after it. 61195 with the set of feet under him. Bogner trying oh, to run. Oh, he's flag. wrapped up right away that time. It's 50 Walker Kramer. I'll tell you what, Kramer has impressed me tonight. He's mm -hmm. been all over the ball. And that one, they had him through on a middle blitz. Lineman picked him up, um, but unfortunately, the lineman couldn't hold the block. He, he just he ran through the, the block from Dickman, just ran him literally right over. And Bogner gets knocked down for a yard loss. So it'll be third and seven inside seven minutes here in the first half from Mohawk. Two right, tight end, and now they'll motion Chester out wide left. Bogner lets him set up, claps for it, wants to throw. Chester on a slant route. Kavass is complete. Chester lowers the shoulder. He's got the first down, and that's what you need out of your yeah. senior. A nice crisp route, and then Chester challenging up the safety and the corner. They get lower than me. Let's go. He picks it up, moves the sticks. I I'll be honest with you. I've always believed that – Colonel Crawford and the way they've been playing defense for the last several years, that's what's open against them most of all. Is I mean, they'll back off the cornerbacks a little bit and give you yeah, some you can space. dink and dunk down they'll, the field you if you can, want. They'll give you that, and, and they'll make it tight once you get closer to the 20s. But at least you can get yardage that way, short passes. They're going to go deep this time, and nobody home. Golig ran a post. Chester, or excuse me, not Chester, um, Bogner oh, threw yeah. the fade. But you had Chester wide yes, I, open in the middle of the field. I, I was going to say we the see same on the thing. OH report, oh, I missed the replay. But he was wide open. It, well, and it, like you said, Chester runs a short route, and they gave it to him. Mm -hmm. But and I think the the crazy thing is, I think Bogner saw him, but said, "No, I'm going to take the bigger shot." And uh, there was two defenders down there, tight window, not the right move. 
Trips right side. Bogner going to throw it again. This time it's Golig. Golig steps up, makes a pass, or makes the catch. Great blocking. Chester, and it was, um, uh, excuse me, number five, Brant Kirian yep. making some nice blocks on the outside. And that will be about a yard shy of a first down, but a good pickup there. Golig driven hard out of bounds. Honestly, I mean, if you really look at it, if you get good blocking on the edges, like they're getting on a receiver on that play, you're going to get some yards because when they overload sides like that, they basically are relying on a player like Vote to just be able to run it down. They use their speed on defense to pick up the yards. They're going to go straight up the gut with Bogner, their Goodwin's best ball carrier. Crawford side official says That's no, what I was but the too. near side the official near says one, yes. The near one, it's an obvious yes. They're gonna, the far side is like, nope, nope. And they, they're going to mark him shy. Wow. About a football length shy. They need the 49 of Colonel Crawford. They're at the 49 and a half. Trips to the left side. Bogner started with a hard count. Nobody jumped. It is a four-man front for the Eagles. They're going to spread out their linebackers on fourth and one. No blitz being shown by the Eagles. Bogner will hand uh, off. They're going to stretch right. no. play on the outside. No. Oh, yeah. oh, he's able to no. shake the tackle, but he's not able to yeah. get there. Boat had him in Low the Low by the defense, able to bring him down. Yes, Boat had him wrapped up. But he couldn't get him down. And I was like, oh, he's going to get there. But then it slowed it down. And then McMichael, it was Ryan McMichael coming up, got him about probably a yard behind the line of scrimmage. And there, there's no way he's going to get that one. On fourth and a foot, they try and stretch yeah. it out with Braxton Frisch. Frisch can't get there, and it'll be turnover on downs. And the Eagles have more great starting field position, and it's going to be right at the 50 once again. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. Interesting. No. Ball placement is... High school officiating is sometimes confusing. They did where they put, marked the ball. It would have been a first down, but that's where Crawford's going to start their drive, so a little confusing. Pass play on first down it's in the Baker. near flats. It's complete. Baker gets it up, up the field. McMichael, McMichael again showing the wheels, gets it down to the 25-yard line. Man, he just had so much green grass in front of him. Good play call by Coach Bruner there, but that is so – it's very, I don't know, yeah. interesting ball placement there. Yep. Because that easily gives Mohawk the first down. Easily. Where they put the ball, they did. It was almost like they got lost. Now, I'll be honest with you. I, 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 from where I saw it, he didn't get the first down. No, he did not. Short. Yeah. But still, I think they just placed it in the wrong spot. And there's a 27-yard gain on first down. Once again, hitting Connor McMichael. Boat splits wide to the right. Baker's going to go to there him on the is. post. Wide, wide open. Drop it in the bucket. Complete for the touchdown. Baker to vote. And it's 33-0 with 5.09 in the first half. Yeah, good luck guarding Trevor Vote one-on-one. That's basically what I'm You better pack a lunch and bring an army. No, thank you. I mean, that, you know, simple slant route. It's not, it's not fancy, but he's just so fast. And when you guard him out there on the edge like that, they just can't keep up with him. There's just no way. And, you know, Baker able to drop it right into the bucket. Easy. Didn't even need to throw a little shimmy at the top of the route. He just oh. outruns Bogner. And Morton will punch it through again. 34 to 0. 509 to go here in week number nine. We are in the first half in Sycamore. We'll be right back on WQEL and streaming live online on the OH Report. from around the league carry up 38 
to zero, and Winford up on Seneca East, twenty-seven to six. Tell you right now, I'm, I said it before. I'm like Winford. I think you know when I saw them last week, I thought they could beat Crawford. They're going to get into the playoffs, and they're going to be a low seed, and somebody a high seed is not going to want to see them. I mean, they're they're physical, they're big, and they're getting better. I you got you two what. backs, Anthony Evans. You got uh, Thunder and Lightning, Evans and Blair, and even Blair. Very shifty back, and he can turn him on if he needs to. Yep. But I wouldn't want to meet him in the hole. That kid, yep. his lower half is extremely strong. He runs low to the ground, and they're improving. As, <laughs> I mean, under second-year head coach Kyle Skidmore, they lost five one-score games last yes. year. They've lost a couple this year. You talked about the game last week against Crawford that they could have won. won. And some would argue should have won. I mean, they had penalties that just slaughtered them in the game. I mean, if they didn't have the penalty problems in that game, I think they win that win, and win I, that game a week ago. I'd so. pay to see a foot race between James Renfus and Trevor Bowen. Well, and that's what they were doing last week. I mean, Boat was trying to was guarding Renfus one on one on defense, and Renfus still ended up with over 100 yards receiving. I mean, that's he. You know, it's funny when Winford throws the football, everybody knows who they're throwing it to, yeah. and people still can't stop it. Mm -hmm. They don't throw a lot, but when they do, it's pretty. It's that good. Offsides on the first kickoff, so they'll back him up, but Morton still sends it inside the 10. Here comes Chester. Chester makes one miss, makes two miss, keeps the feet moving, and he's up to about the 30-yard line for Mohawk at the five-minute mark in the second quarter. And this Mohawk offense needs to find a little something, a little mojo to show some life here as they get into the break. Well, and again, I think part of the conversation that they should have you know, with Bogner is saying, take what the defense gives you. You know, when Chester, we just saw it in the last drive, Chester was open, short, would have been a five-yard, five-yard little quick pass. He probably could have turned up field, got another five to ten. Mm -hmm. But he said, no, I'm going to go for the 25-yard pass into coverage. Um, overthrew it, becomes decision-making. So, you know what, if they're going to give you five-yard passes, take the five-yard passes. You know, sooner or later, maybe the Crawford defense is fast and as good as they are. Maybe they overrun. Maybe they miss a tackle and get a big play. Oh, they're going to go halfback pass. Center of the field, wide open. Woodland, he makes the catch at the 40, down at the 34-yard line. Throw made by 31. Frisch. Oh, excuse me, yes, Frisch. Frisch. And Woodland hauls it in. He was wide open. He had to wait on that one or he'd be going into pay dirt. 35-yard pickup. Right down the field. And again, Crawford just playing over aggressive, just completely lost Woodland when Woodland just got behind him. And if again, if he didn't have to wait on the pass, he's in the end zone. So Coach Hawkins going into his bag of tricks. Here's Bogner. Slant route has Chester. Chester spinning, still moving. Chester holding on to the football. And he's got about 10, Jeff. And this is the best two plays for Mohawk so far tonight. Back to back. Were they giving the first down? Eh? Near side Mohawk official says it. no. No. Haven't been getting favorable spots. So a gain of but... nine on second. It'll be second and one. 4.05 to go here in the first half. And Mohawk with some life here. Bogner has the snap. Going to oh. go up the middle in a nice hole. He just emerged out of a huge traffic jam. That was Evan England. And that was England on his first carry. Yep, sure was. So Going that'll right pick up, up the, the first down. And what I liked about it is that McMichael was the one who makes the tackle. Ryan McMichael down the field, beats him one-on-one, -on -one and, he, and he gets him down, but England kind of drags him forward a little bit. So, you know, kind of shows big body, not going to be easy to, go, to, to be brought down. Bogner goes to the back again. This time, not a lot of space. England again. The gain of a yard. Yep, about a yard. If that. Each team with all three timeouts remaining here in the first half. Clock moving at 3.20. And, of course, stay tuned at the break. It's the Ken Standing Seam Halftime Show brought to you by Ken and Matt Studer at Ken Standing Seam. Bogner rolling right, looking downfield, throwing low and incomplete. Looking for the grass route. It was Kerry in the intended receiver, who's listed at five foot nineteen, <laughs> but I believe he is five foot nine. Just a sophomore. And Kiri, and that's a name that oh. you know you know is a Mohawk name, and yep. you hope he develops, continues to get faster, stronger. And just a sophomore, so that's big. Absolutely. Get him and Heyman back next year. Bogner empty in the backfield. 
Wing will stay in the block. Bogner flush pressure on the backside. Gets rid of it. Uh, he was he, drilled as yeah. he threw it. Hit from behind by 34, Payne DeGray. And Payne is a returning, he's a, just a sophomore, yeah. returning letterman. He is 6'5", 210, and oozes with athleticism. Oh, man, he was coming from the backside. Now it's, you know, it, from when you're on our end of it, and again, Bogner is just in the pocket. He's looking at his receiver. And for everybody up here, like, oh, this is slow motion. He's going to mm -hmm. get hit in the back. Hopefully he gets rid of that ball. And right as it's coming, he, the great got that clean hit right in the back of Bogner. Ben wants to throw again. Steps up in the pocket. Throws across Good the catch. middle on a frozen rope. Oh, they're going to give it a completion. Buffered on the roll, saying he took it away. Yeah. But this isn't the NFL. Yeah, he's That's dead. down initially. So it is going to be – they shouldn't even talk, talk about it. Over, it. But it's, it's a first down. I mean, it's a 12-yard route. Really nice, nicely executed. Gets down, and I'm looking at the replay. He, he's down on the ground, mm -hmm. so no question. First down play right there. Got 11 yards on the pass to Kirian. So it'll be first and goal. First time in the red zone for the Mohawk Warriors. Kirian, nice reception there on the connection with Bogner. And Coach Bruner is going to take his first time out with 2.46 to go in the first half. It's been all Crawford, but Mohawk is threatening as we near halftime. 34 to 0. Warriors are at the Eagle 4. We'll be right back. Let's give that cheer squad a big round of applause. Nice job, ladies. Once again with Jeff Roberts. Coach's Corner hits the road for bonus coverage this week, Jeff. Bonus coverage. Can't wait. Check out the Coach's Corner highlight interviews on CrawfordCountyNow.com. Under the Sports tab, our next live show will be October 25th. Stay tuned to the Crawford County Sports page for all the highlights. Bogner in the gun. Back on his left hip. He's got Woodland wide right. Going to go to the back, straight up the gut on the ISO. It was England. Man, they just keeps fighting in there. In England. England. A little power. You know, again, it's funny because got down maybe a yard on that play. One of the rare players you see on the roster, you know, they got him at 5'9", 165. They got him at offensive line, running back, defensive line, inside linebacker. I mean, Coach, put me in. I'll do it all. Exactly. Do whatever you need me to do. But, you know, he'll – He'll power run for him, you know, not easy to bring down. He'll give him the best that he's got. Get maybe a half yard there on first down. Golig, Chester, Kirian split wide to the left. Bogner's going to roll that way. Now he reverses field, come oh, back near side. Bogner directing traffic, fights his way to the pylon. Bogner spins, gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Ben Bogner. Oh, but a flag comes down and in, the in the backfield. And it'll it's be a hold. hold. And when you have a quarterback that's mobile, you start yeah. one way, he reverses field. You got to let that defender go yeah. or ride him and wash him out. But yeah. the penalty comes in, and once again, Mohawk in back to back weeks shooting themselves in the foot in timely situations. And you kind of see it on the replay. Um, you know, on the block, there's a little bit of a tackle on the left side there, unfortunately. And, uh, and it was funny because when they came back, um, it was Braden Chester, who was not the one who made the hold, but he went back and he kind of looked at the official like, what happened? Mm -hmm. um, trying to kind of figure it out. Minute 55 to go first half. Bogner in the gun. Bogner wants to throw against a five-man rush. A lot of pressure. Comeback route. Looking near side for Woodland. And nobody home. Stops it with a minute 51. And that'll be third and 13. Yeah. Well, third and goal from the 13. And, and I'll be honest with you, this is where things get really challenging against Crawford. Like I said, they'll give you a lot of the little short passes, and you can sometimes move it from the 20 to the 20. Once they get inside that 20-yard line, it's, like I said, bend but don't break. And, you know, they make it tough on a defense or on an offense. 
Warriors really needing a score to avoid that running clock because Crawford gets it to start the half. Oh, they got it. High pass, incomplete. The DB fell down. Kirian was open over there on the stop route, but Bogner threw it way too high. That's a long throw and a hard throw to make. Yep. Incomplete. Now it'll be fourth and goal from the 13. Logan Goddard defending Kirian over there. And, you know, Kirian gave him the little push off, you know, something you can kind of get away with as a receiver. And when Goddard turned to try to kind of step up to, to regain himself, his foot slipped out and he was going to be open. And unfortunately, just overthrew it by Bogner, missed the target. Stack doubles on either side of Bogner. Back in the backfield. Three man rush. Bogner now going to step up. Oh, now reverse his course and he is knocked down. Sack attack for the Colonel Crawford Eagles. 63, Tim. Faulkner in there. Faulkner's first sack of the night. Yep. And that's going to be a turnover on downs on fourth down. Gives it back to the Eagles. Always intrigued here um, about, you know, what goes to a coach's head if you're Coach Bruner now. I mean, you, you got a, a 34 nothing lead, 138 on the clock, and you got the ball to start the second half. Um, you know, you are obviously have the ability to be able to score big. Um, are you willing to kind of just eat this thing out and just kind of take it in the second half? Or do you just say, all right, I'm going to take vote around the edge here, see if I can break open another big run with him or McMichael, who's had a couple of big ones already. Oh, here's there Vogt is Vogt again. Vote sacked Vogt. back there. Vote brought down on the well, play. Thought it might be a face mask, but yeah. no call. He he dropped the ball on, on the snap here. And, you know, when he did, you know, he just kind of bobbled it. And when he went down, he, he was able to recollect it. But, man, coming through. 52, yeah. Logan Hemminger. Yep, exactly. He got there right in his face, was able to bring vote down. Minute 10 to go, first half, second and 15. Looks like Baker now in the gun. He will hand off McMichael. McMichael and Nothing. he's going to be ramped up for a loss on the play. Brought down at the 10-yard line over there. And that was just slow to develop. Yeah. Mohawk crashing that left edge. And again, timeout called. This one maybe be Mohawk or no? Nope. Crawford going to nope. take another timeout. Nope. Okay. So well, 50 seconds it. to go here in the first half. Colonel Crawford up 34 to zero. They will take timeout number two. We will do the same. You're listening to WQEL 92.7 FM and streaming live online on the OH Report. Back on WQEL and live online on the OH Report. Play our Grand in the Hand contest presented by Chevy of Bucyrus. You have a chance of winning 1000 bucks cash every weekday through the rest of the month. Details at WQEL.com. Here is Vote. Vote started left side, going to throw back to the right. Makes a man miss in the backfield. Coming up the center now and over the 25-yard line. Bruner. That was Bruner on his first reception. First pass thrown by Vote in the game. Mm -hmm. And now showing run um, initially, then reverse the it score. Be, it's fourth and one now. Got to, you know, got a lot of yards there. They're going to hurry up to the line, but now Vote will slow the pace as he looks to the sideline to Coach Bruner. See what they do here. Switching the tight end or the wing from the right to left. Play clock down to 10. Game clock at 8. They won't have to snap it. Well, they will. Vote going to turn. Hand off. Thomas, he's got the first down. That should do it here in the first half. He'll stop the clock briefly. Up over the 30 to the 31. That'll do it. Official winds it. And that will close out the first half here at Mohawk. Colonel Crawford. The offense has exploded for 34 points here in the first half. The backfield. McMichael. Thomas. Both with a pair of touchdowns, and they lead it. Like I said, 34 to 0. You're listening to WQEL 92.7 FM, WQEL.com, and live online on the OH Report. I'm Josh Stallings alongside Jeff Roberts, and we'll be back with the Ken Standing Steam Halftime Show 
right after this. toil, we sweat, we live, we breathe, we ache, and cry, and laugh, and bleed, we dance, we play, we love, we nourish, we yearn, and wish, and hope, and cherish. We mend, we heal, we repair, we sow, we love this land, it's what we do. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report.
Ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of Mr. Justin Cooper, with assistants Randy Cordial and Jerry McCoy, Colonel Crawford High School proudly presents your 2023 Eagle Marching Band. After living on a prayer by Bon Jovi, we are going to get ready to witness pure musical swagger. Soak in the vibe as we bring you the undeniable charm and groove of this legendary hit, Sharp Dressed Man by ZZ Top. Attention metalheads and headbangers, get ready to unleash your wild side. Bang your heads and witness a sonic spectacle that'll blow your mind. Let the metal madness commence with Metallica's Enter Sandman.
Congrats here at for your 2023 Colonel Crawford Eagle Marching Band. Here at the half on WQEL 92.7 FM and WQEL.com and also streaming live online on the OH Report. I'm Josh Stallings alongside Jeff Roberts tonight in Sycamore at the half. It is 34-0. Colonel Crawford coming into senior night and the offense is showing what they can do on the ground as they have a three-headed monster back there and they've shown exactly what they are. Dominant. 34 to 0. You're listening to the Ken Standing Seam halftime show brought to you by our fine friends at Ken Standing Seam. Phone Matt Studer today at 419 544 6275. That's Ken and Matt Studer at Ken Standing Seam, 419 544 6275. Here on the campus of Mohawk, I'm looking at a couple of Matt's roofs. They're beautiful, they'll last forever. It's a custom roof rolled out right on site, and it's the last roof you'll ever need. No matter if it's commercial, residential, whatever the roof need you have. Ken and Matt at Ken Standing Seam have the roof for you. 34 to 0, Jeff, and offensively for Mohawk, we knew they needed to be physical. They needed to pack the box, show that they weren't going to shy away from contact. Right. Well, it's been all Colonel Crawford, <laughs> and that offensive line has plowed the road. Well, that's, you know, we said coming into it, we thought, you know, Mohawk only had a chance in two senses. We thought, you know, Crawford, we thought their key was control the line of scrimmage. Moak, we said, don't let up big plays. Well, guess what has happened in this game? Colonel Crawford has controlled the line of scrimmage and he's gotten a lot of big plays. Yep. And as a result, here we are, 34 to nothing. Um, it's pretty easy to see. I mean, they're just running the football at will. 227 yards already at halftime. Just That's running just on the, the ground, yeah. Just running the football. Connor McMichael has touched the ball five times out of the backfield and has 142 yards. I mean... Uh, you know that's that'll pretty, boost that average that's pretty, pretty good quick. And he's already averaging 10 yards a carry on the season so um it, it has been a, a situation where mohawk I, I think the problem is is when you go in as a defensive coach you're looking at it going i, I don't know exactly what to do mm -hmm. when i pack people inside they take it to the edges they're faster than us if i try to spread it out on defense they pound up the middle and they just you know they, they basically gash us that way so you know when you're Going against a team that's just bigger, stronger, faster, and well-coached by Coach Bruner, it, it just makes things really challenging. We knew it would be an uphill battle for Mohawk tonight because yep. they don't have the firepower to match up with Crawford. But they are struggling to even sustain drives and pick up first downs. I believe just three first downs in the first half. And that's one thing where they're taking shots down the field when they have Chester open in the middle. You talked about Colonel Crawford will give you those short passes. They're not going to get burnt deep. They've only done that once, and that was a trick play by Mohawk yeah. that, that got them that big chunk of yardage. So they're going to have to kind of settle in and take what the defense gives them. I, I don't think there's any question about it. Look, there, there's two things you can tell you about. I can tell you about Colonel Crawford in, in defensively. They will give you short yardage. Um, short yardage passes, things like that. They'll give you a little screen. They'll give you a little five-yard hook. And then they are hyper-aggressive and attacking. I mean, they're fast, they're big, and they will come flying at you. So when you catch that ball, you better be ready because defenders are coming. And the only thing you can really do is, A, take what they give you, and every once in a while – try to catch them over pursuing because one of the things about being uh, aggressive on defense is sometimes you can over pursue on a play and that's what happened on the trick play you do a little you know you you, you fake it you give a handoff running back throws the football now all of a sudden you got a safety who's peeling up he wants to go and hit he's to get to run play he's vacated his spot that's where colonel crawford becomes uh the the you have availability against them mm -hmm. outside of that not much. Like, there's not a lot of other options that you're going to get on this defense, and you got to be able to take what you can get. And one thing that I think Mohawk's offensive front is really struggling with is the looks that the front seven, front eight of Colonel Crawford are bringing. They're sometimes just three down linemen with a nose tackle, two wide defensive ends. Yeah. They'll put them three down linemen, and they'll bunch them in tight. Sometimes they'll go five down linemen and spread them out again. They'll, they're bringing multiple blitzes. A couple times we've seen delayed blitzes where once they realize that Ben Bogner wants to throw the football, that middle linebacker that's spying him and spying his running ability, he'll attack. Yeah. And that's a struggle for this young offensive line. For Mohawk, they are picking up the blitzers, communicating before the play, recognizing and communicating. And 
That's what they have has to they have to improve in the second half. But it's thirty four to zero. It's going to be Colonel Crawford football in a running clock. Yeah. And this this third quarter could go by in the blink of an eye. No, oh, I don't think there's any question. I think that when Colonel Crawford comes out with the ball in their hands, they're going to go and say, "Let's get a touchdown on the board." That way we can make it. If you get to forty one, even if Mohawk scores, the clock continues to run. Mm-hmm. At this point in time, that's one of the things that goes in the coaches' minds. Is like. We just don't want to stop this clock. We don't want to prolong the game. The longer the game gets prolonged, unfortunately, the bigger chance for injuries, things like that. So if you're Coach Bruner, you're just going to leave those starters out there, especially at the beginning. Say, let's get out there. One more score. We get up 41 nothing, whatever it might be. And then we can basically got a bus ride home to call it an evening. And we're going 8-1. and one, And, you know, we got one game left and we're staring at a playoff berth. So, you know, they can kind of just forecast and look ahead. And, you know, for Mohawk, this is about development still. I mean, I know it's week eight, and you're like, what are you developing for? Well, you're developing because you only got five seniors on this team, and you got a bunch of young kids who are learning what it's like to get to the top half of the N10 because that's what Coach Daniel's going to want out of this club in the next year or two is them moving from a team that right now only has one win in the league to a team that, you know, by next year is worst-case scenario, middle of the pack, upper half of the pack. And we talked about it in the pregame a little bit. Uh, and we saw it last week. Well, I saw it last week because Anthony and I were here. Yeah. You were calling the Winford game, or Winford Crawford game. But uh, shooting themselves in the foot was a the key. They had it. They had a nice drive. They had a couple first downs. Got it in the red zone. Got it inside the five, and they put it in the end zone. Yeah. But a penalty. Shot themselves in the foot. Case in point. Bring it back. There's still a zero on the scoreboard. You've and, and, got to eliminate penalties. And the one thing that you know you try to explain to people is that we know going into games when we see two teams that are not matched up real well that the team that has less talent needs to play a clean football game. They can't jump off sides. They can't turn the ball over. They can't make mistakes. They can't fall when they're you know drop a pass. You know all the little types of things. But unfortunately, there's a reason why some teams are good and some teams are not. And it's not just about talent. Sometimes it's about headspace, how, you know, how, how to make, not make mistakes, you know, Um, you know, some mistakes you can't control other times you can. And uh, a lot of times that's a a thing that's really challenging for, for teams that are struggling to overcome is not making the errors that affect the outcome of a football game that always kind of put them on the downside of you know the 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 win-loss scoreboard because honestly if you look at it crawford is excuse me uh for mohawk this is a bad matchup game for mm-hmm. for mohawk but the reality is they're a team that has played a lot of close games this year and if they could just figure out a way to not make mistakes They'd have a lot more wins, you know, under their belt right now. I'm not saying that they'd be in the top of the N10, but they wouldn't be sitting here going into week nine with only one win on the season. That week one Calvert loss, I think that kind of, I don't want to say set the tone, uh-huh. but I think that could have maybe changed the course a little bit of this season had they beaten that very good Division Seven Crawford team, or Calvert team. That gets guys a little bit more excited to come to practice each week. And then, you know, you start the game, you get the ball to start it, and you throw a pick. Yeah. So automatically, you're giving Colonel Crawford at least one more possession, and you can't do that with a very good Colonel Crawford offense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in an offense that really, like I said, you're not, you don't match up well against. Mm-hmm. I mean, 22 I, kids on their roster are over 200 pounds. I, I'm Mohawk has seven or six. Yeah, and, and you know what? People, don't, it's never talked about a lot or enough. Uh, you know, because it's not a super sexy or exciting topic, but honestly, the game of sports really oftentimes is about matchups. Um, no matter what the sport is, how well do you match up against who you're playing? It's not about necessarily always this team is better than this team in every way. Rarely is it the case where one team is better than everybody, somebody else in every single way. It does happen occasionally, but it's how well do you match up against this team that you're playing against, and ultimately that is the big thing that as we're looking even at this game here, it, you know, we saw it on paper. We thought where Crawford is good is where Mohawk is not. Crawford is averaging almost nine yards a carry on the ground. Mohawk lets up almost six yards a carry on the ground. That's not good numbers when you're the Warriors. And what we're seeing here throughout the first half is that is what has played out onto the field. Mm-hmm.
Let's go ahead and look at the first half numbers brought to you by Ken and Matt Studer at Ken Standing Team. Once again, we'll start with the Colonel Crawford Eagles. 227 yards on the ground on 21 carries, four touchdown runs. Two of them from Micah Thomas, who's got 12 carries, 67 yards. Connor McMichael's got the other two, five carries, 142 yards. Unbelievable. Trevor Vote in there with uh, four carries for 18 yards. Uh, vote throwing the football one of one of one 19 yards um, one catch went over to Caden Bruner the other uh, passes were completed by Peyton Baker he's two of three throwing the football including a touchdown 24 yarder that went to Trevor vote Connor McMichael also a 27 yard catch so with 70 yards passing 270 or excuse me 297 yards of total offense in the first half for Colonel Crawford for Mohawk on the ground, kind of struggling to move the football. Evan England leads the team, three carries, 12 yards. It's uh, Elias Magalanes with uh, three carries or three yards on two carries. Braxton Frisch has got one carry for no yards. And Bogner, he's got nine carries, seven yards. So as a team, 22 yards on 15 carries. When Bogner throws the football, um, he's completed 10 of 20 for 63 yards. Does have a pick in there. Braxton Frisch came in and threw one completed pass. So actually, excuse me, Bogner was 9 of 20. So as a team, they're 10 of 21, 98 yards passing. And that uh, leads them to 120 yards of offense being led. Uh, it's a Drew Woodland, the one uh, pass from Frisch. That went for 35 yards. Brant Kirian, three catches, 22 yards. Nick Goling, five, uh, 15 yards on three catches. Braden Chester, two catches, 17 yards. And Braxton Frisch has got a catch for nine yards. So once again, Big difference in offensive numbers between the two teams. First downs, turnovers, any stat possible. Colonel Crawford is just dominating here in week number nine on the road. They lead this thing 34-0 to zero at the break. Captains are out at the middle of the field. It will be Colonel Crawford with the football to start the second half, and they will head west. The flag is totally still now, and we have a beautiful night for football here in Sycamore. Unfortunately for the Mohawk faithful, it's been all Colonel Crawford so far. Of course, it is Friday Night Football, so Davy Jones back at the studio getting set for another edition of the Friday Night Phone Board. Davy's looking for scores, uh, games you're out and about at, you're looking for scores, call him up, or you want to talk Browns. There's a lot going on up in Berea right now. The base Major League playoffs are going on right now. Uh, Cavaliers basketball actually is going to start here in a few weeks. Crazy. So, Anything you want to talk about in the wide, wide world of sports, call up Davey. And, of course, as always, we got Buckeye football coming your way tomorrow. Davey always wanted to talk about that as the Buckeyes match up with Purdue. You can find the game right here on WQEL, and I believe that is a noon kickoff. Right, Jeff? Sure. Yes, I think yes. it is. <laughs> so we are getting set for the second half here from Mohawk. It is 34-0. to We'll have the Eagles and the offense on the field right after this. Back here on WQEL, 92.7 FM, WQEL.com, as well as live online on the OH Report. Officials getting this thing going a little early here in the second half. Chester's kick picked up by Vote. Vote did a little dance, falls down at the 23, and it'll be first and 10 
for the Eagles. But a flag, flag as yep. soon as Crawford broke the huddle, so they must have broke the huddle yep, with 12. Too many guys on the field. Substitution. Yep, they got Brady Hill running over there at the last minute. Like, uh, sorry. sorry, coach. Thought you told me to go out. So. so we start the second half and already down to 11 minutes as the running clock is initiated with the 34-0 lead. Boat in the gun. He is going to hand off. There, no, keep it. keeps it himself, comes around the right side, picks up a block, Boat lowers the shoulder, runs over the oh, defender. Yeah. That's Bogner. Bogner went shoulder to shoulder with him, and Boat won that matchup, and Boat's got a fresh set of downs with a pickup of about 17. Well, you know, sometimes that's the, the thing about a guy like Vote is he's so fast and he's so elusive that I think sometimes defenders think he's going to try to make a move and get around me. He so, didn't. So <laughs> they think, oh, okay, I'm, I can get a little passive here because he's probably going to run out of bounds. And he was like, no, that's not what I'm doing. I'm running over you. And it, it puts the defender sort of on the defensive. He's going to fake the handoff. Boat's going to throw open across the middle on the, on the skinny Boat. post. And the pass is complete. That is six. Brady Hill, five foot eleven inch junior, making his first catch. Yep, Brady Hill. I, I just said moments ago, he was the one who ran off the field. Sort of, you know. Okay, sorry, we had he too was many antsy. guys out there. <laughs> you know, but he knew a play was coming in his direction, uh, and, and there it was. Nice pass right there from Vogue, yep. finding his uh, receiver. Great throw, great connection there with Hill. Vote in the gun, back on his left hip. He's going to give it to him. Here's McMichael. And he's tackled forward for a four-yard pickup over the 45, or excuse me, 35, and down at the 34-yard line. He's going to be like, Coach, you make me run at the middle. I only got four yards. and screws up my average. Probably his shortest pickup of the night. By far. McMichael will oh, stay no. in. He did have one minus five okay. at the end there, but, you know. Sue checks out, or excuse me, Caden Bruner checks out. Splitting wide left is Lucas Foy. He's the lone receiver on the play. Two backs on either side of Vote. He should take a back on either side of Vote. Double tight set on second and seven. Here is Thomas. Thomas going through B gap. He had a lead blocker, McMichael, in front. Not a lot of room, but still positive yardage and a gain of three. I got to be honest with you, there was some rocking on the offensive line there. Uh, you know, it was kind of a little hesitation on the snap. And a lot of the linemen all sort of kind of were pushing forward. Not, not aggressive not a, but a little bit but in a game like this when you know officials look at the clock they sometimes look at the score and go eh, lean with it rock with it right yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna call that <laughs> you know, i don't need to stop anything here third and four we're already down to 829 to go in the third quarter back on the right and left tip of vote double tight set again on third and short this time it is Thomas. Thomas looking up the gut. Now he's going to bounce it right side, lowers the shoulder, and gang oh. tackled out of bounds, but still but, driving the pile. You know, it was Very him nice against compass. one, two, three, four, five, six Mohawk Warriors, but half of them were tackling him from behind, so they were pushing him forward. Several so, warriors. you know, ends up going for probably would have been held up for about a three yard pickup, four yard pickup, but really close to the first down marker. Instead, he easily gets the first down and extra yards because four of those guys were pushing from behind him. Tackle made on that play initially by Bogner, but a big helper was Owen Patrizzi at 5'7", 130 pounds, soaking wet. First and 10. Two to the left with a wing. Here is Thomas. Thomas off the left edge, slung down, but more positive yardage on the ground. We do have a flag. Yep. Flag thrown here. It's, it looks like a sideline side violation. Warning. Yeah, so Coach Daniel turns in disgust. Just be a maybe, a, maybe directed towards him a little bit. Coach, so a nice little fired up. Oh, oh and sportsmanlike conduct on the Mohawk Warrior coaching staff. So they didn't like the initial call. So after a nice run right there by Thomas, that officials still staring at the coaches. Yeah. I'm on him down a little yeah. bit. So Fran makes it Coach Daniel, down. whether it's Carl or Eric, <laughs> they're going to have the last word typically. Officials don't sometimes respond well. No. So, you know, so. But it was interesting because there was no demonstrative movement going down right. on the sideline, but it was clearly just kind of an eyeball to eyeball. A little We're verbal scared. exchange. You know, it'll be first and goal now from the 10 following the penalty. 
Thomas. Crawford going to run it with Thomas. Right side, trying to go behind that right Thomas guard. And short gain on that play. And once again, Owen so Patrizzi. Owen, 5'7". He's listed at 5'7", 140. He's a sophomore running back, outside linebacker. If he's 5'7", 140, I'm six foot 190. But he plays like he's 6'2", 240. Yeah, he'll throw himself in there, that's for sure. Two right side. He's got a wing and a tight left. Back in the backfield on his right side. Boy, goes in motion. He's going to hand off. Thomas, Thomas going up behind the puller. And Thomas inside the five, down at the four, flag but another down. flag. A false start. That one's going to go on Crawford. So bring it back. Already down to 520 here in this third quarter. And this running clock has certainly changed Friday night. Oh. But some for the better, some for the worse, depending on who you're talking to. Certainly. Younger guys lose reps yeah. in games like this. They don't get that Friday night experience. But certain certain games, this it could end up being 75-0, to 75-6, oh, and, and nobody has fun then. Yep. Well, and it, you know, for somebody who's been around calling games for a long time, I mean, you know, years ago when there wasn't running clocks, and, you know, especially during that time years ago, you know, if you go back 15 years ago, Winford was really good at that point in time. And mm -hmm. oh, there's a run by Vote. Vote showing his elusiveness. Tried to go outside, cut it back up the middle, then bust it outside again. And a short game, ran a lot, but didn't gain a didn't gain much. But it, during those years when they were so good, they, I mean, they would be up 50 to nothing at halftime, have to play out the second half. The Royals, you're saying. Yes, yeah. they, they would be. And I'm telling you right now, they would sit there and they would be sitting there at the beginning of the third quarter staring at the clock and watching the play clock go down to one second left and then handing the ball off. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, all right. Made your job oh, pretty tough. Boy. Heavy package this time. Fakes it to McMichael. Rolling. Bo going to throw it, it and a BB across the middle for the touchdown. I think it's Tyler, Tyler Smith. Yep, 41. Tyler Smith. Yep. Smith, the fullback, running back combination, showing the hands there and a nice Ball delivered by Trevor Vote for six, and it is forty to zero. Again, we'll get uh, another look at Morton on the extra point. Every once in a while, you get to see like a player like Vote, who's really more of a he's more of an athlete than a quarterback. Mm -hmm. You see him when they're on the guys like that when they're on the run. They sometimes they throw the ball better, and that one was a dart, just just bullet it right into the chest of Tyler Smith. Morton trying to clear the flagpole and nearly does with that boomer. Punches it through. It's 41-0. to 0, 3.17 to go in the third quarter in Sycamore. Crawford over Mohawk. We'll be right back. It's week six of the pro football season. The Browns will host the undefeated San Francisco 49ers on Sunday. Well, Cincinnati, fresh off a win over Arizona, take on Seattle at home. If you are good at picking winners and losers of pro football, play our pro football challenge contest. You could win $50,000. Details at WQEL.com. More in. Sends an end over kick, end over end kick. Ooh. And catching it going backwards is Chester inside the five. Chester comes up the middle of the field. Chester over the 15. Ball Chester down. loses the fumble. I think Crawford will have it at the 19-yard line. Yeah, they sure do. There's the fumble. Chester gets tripped up. 
Here's the replay, courtesy of the OH report. Hit hard, great hit delivered by 25. Brady Fox put his shoulder helmet right on that football, jarred it loose. Yep. Officials still talking about it, but yeah. if they can see this view that we have from the OH, it is a clear fumble. Yep, exactly. Walker Kramer is kind of coming from behind. He gets him right around the arm right at the same time that tackle's mm -hmm. coming in, and the ball drops right in front. Uh, it was actually pretty Give them both a the force try. Oh, they're giving it to Mohawk. Oh, wow. Saini is down. That, interesting. Okay, Mohawk for once catching a break at home. Okay, don't worry. I will run the monitor from the OH report down <laughs> for the replay. Uh, that is, you know what, Mohawk will take no that. No replay in high school yet. No, exactly. Well, and I'll tell you right now, a week ago, um, in the Winford Crawford game, there was um, a touchdown run at the end that put Crawford up. Um, Connor McMichael was coming down the sideline. Winford thought he stepped out of bounds. Mm -hmm. Crawford said he didn't, and I saw the replay from the OH report. Um, they and, still and think he stepped. I got to be honest with you. I stared at it at that point in time, and I was like, I still don't know. Even in the replay, you needed like to zoom in, like you know. So. It happens. Warriors will have it, though. Comeback route complete. Bogner to Kirian. Kirian will have a first down up over the 30-yard line. That was a great ball delivered by Bogner. Hung tight in the pocket. Delivered it to a great route by Kirian. Yeah, very well done right there. And again, this is the type of play that I, I keep saying that you, you got to do against. When you're a team like Mohawk, you got to do against Crawford. You, you know what? The comeback route because their cornerbacks will play a little soft out mm -hmm. there. They'll give you some space. So take what they'll give you. Bogner are going to throw again. Three-man rush. He's got That's Chester it. on a stop route. Chester over the 40. Give him seven on first down. And there you go. Take what they give you. Found the soft spot in the defense. Yep. And just the three-man rush. Bogner able to sit tight and deliver a strike. Already down to about a minute here in the third quarter. 41-0. Mohawk driving the football at the 41-yard line. Bogner sends trips to the left side. He's got a back on his right. He is going to take a direct snap and run it right side. Quarterback ISO. He's got the first down over the 45. Now he's going to be drugged back. But forward progress will give him the 46. Yeah, you got five on that one. Good little run. Once again, Mohawk, you know, playing sort of aggressively, obviously, just, you know, mm -hmm. get as many plays in as they possibly can with the running clock. But, uh, you know, the speed up offense and, and kind of doing things a little bit differently um, in terms of, you know, a little shorter passes, a lot more concrete, one step drop and throw from Bogner is getting some movement. There's a delayed blitz again. There they complete it out to Kirian. Oh, that's official going to keep the flag in his pocket on that hole. Yep. Ryan, it's going to be a four yard pickup. I'll tell you what, Ryan, Mike Michael coming for like a a missile from that linebacker spot. You see him just kind of going through a wave of players, including a hold that's right in front of him, but able to get that one. Nice tackle, but not before four yards. And that will close out the third here in Sycamore. 41 to zero. It's all Colonel Crawford here in week number nine. We'll take a timeout. Be back on WQEL and live online on the OH Report. quarter patrizzi drilling it a thousand dollars in his pocket yeah big, biggest uh, applause from the mohawk fans tonight <laughs> bogner's pass deflected at the line of scrimmage great play by 34 Payne to gray big fella getting his hand up in the passing lane 
And that's that sophomore who's yeah. got a varsity letter already. He's going to be a big part of this defense for years to come. Well, yeah, he's 6'5 and 215 pounds. I mean, everybody, every team in the area would love to have pounds yeah, that like Coach, that. Coach Bruner probably wants him to put it on another 30. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh, yeah. They're showing blitz up the middle here on third and six. Bogner's going to roll, has time, pump fakes. Bogner sets up, heaves downfield. He's, he's got, got a man, Kieran. Oh, over the flag. And the no, flag's going to come he out. He ran into him. Yep. It, it was. It's funny because Kieran's downfield, and the defender on that play, Goddard, is trailing. He, he's, he's off, and the throw goes a little bit behind him, so that required – Kirian to stop running, and when he did, Goddard ran into him. A little collision didn't didn't crash into him, didn't knock him over, but that little bodied up, the official right there, he's like, yep, I'm getting you for that one. So 15-yard penalty. Saved him, actually. If they would have completed it, it would have been longer, but still, uh, you know, the 15-yarder right there gets Mohawk another first down. And Ben, I mean, he looked great rolling. He set yep. up, made a good, strong throw downfield, didn't complete the pass. But they got the ball down there with the penalty. Now he's going to set up the throw again, backpedaling, and he's just got to get rid of it. Uh -oh. uh, I don't uh -oh. think he was out of the tackle box. Oh, and there is – he threw it in an area where there was a lineman. The penalty the official just yep. dropped it. Yep, there it is. Intentional grounding against yeah. Ben Bogner and Mohawk. And you got to you got to get a few yards outside of that tackle box yeah. if you're going to make that. Or – get that ball a little bit further down at the feet of that intended receiver. And the screen was set up in the other direction. It was going to yeah. set up to the left, but it was defenders there. Never so developed. Yeah. So he was like, I, I, I just got to get rid of it. But he threw it to the right where there was nobody. If he would have just thrown it at the feet on his left side, um, where he said, all right, I'm not going to let I, my guy's not going to be able to catch it, but neither would anybody else. He could have at least pointed to the, to the receiver. But on that side, there was nobody there. 9.35 to go in the ball game here from Mohawk. Crawford in control. 41-0. Mohawk with the ball. Looking at second and a mile. Trips right side. Bogner steps up. Sees pressure. Evades it. Rolling back left side. Ball across the middle. Got a man wide right open. Hits Kirian in stride. Kirian at the 20. 15. In. Kirian into the end zone. Touchdown, Mohawk. No laundry down. It is a touchdown from Kirian. And like I said, great job. Bogner under a lot of pressure there, but he was able to sneak himself free. Kirian got away from the, the defender, found some space, and then uh, makes a nice move in the open field. Defender coming up, trying to make a tackle, overruns it. He cuts it back, and he's in the end zone for the first time for Mohawk tonight. Hit him in stride. Beautiful ball from Bogner. 41-6, to six, and Mohawk will go for two. I believe they don't ever try extra points. I think they started the season, I think, maybe with Chester, but going for two. Bogner in the gun. Wants to throw. Going to roll right into trips. Throwing grass route. It is complete. Oh, what a stick. Hit made at the goal line and denied. That was 33. Logan Goddard lowering the boom on Kirian. Not getting in. What a hit. Textbook tackle made by the defensive back in open space right as the ball got there. Goddard with the play, and we stay at 41-6. to 8-12 to go in the ballgame. We'll be back. Crawford with the ball. His vote 
and Foy. Or no, excuse me, it is Parker Weissman yeah. and Lucas Foy. Flag comes in. That's not in the area of offsides. Or did he? Uh, yeah, they're gonna, that's okay. gonna call it. He came in at the fifty yard line, yes. not the forty. Oh, oh too many guys. Mohawks the, got twelve yeah. on kickoff. So, the guilty party is number 25, Evan England. Forty-one six. clock continuing to roll here in Sycamore. Not a great night if you're a Warrior fan, but great crowd here on hand for senior night. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. There's not many better places in Ohio to watch a high school Absolutely. football game. Squib kicked down the field and struggled with it, with it for a second. R Rowan Thu able to jump on that football and cover it up. It'll be at the 44-yard line. Yep, tried to do the squig, squib kick, but put a lot behind it, so was able to go far enough downfield that even though Thu didn't get it cleanly, he's able to drop on it with plenty of space. There's no... Black jerseys around them yet, and uh, Colonel Crawford gets to start there. And that's you got to win the field position battle, uh -huh. and they Mohawk has not done themselves any favors with that. Today. Well, I got to be honest with you, nobody wins the field position battle against Colonel Crawford because of Braxton Morton. Yeah, it's just ability to it's kick true. the ball so much further than anybody else can for the other teams that it really is a big advantage. It's a huge factor that that goes into a lot of these high school football games. Small, small high school football at for sure. Yep. Exactly. You if one team has got somebody who could kick far and the other team doesn't have anybody who can kick at all, it it flips the field position a lot. Peyton Baker under center now, but we have delay a game. Yep, some new bodies out there in the back trying to get as the, well. Bryce everybody Hunt. sorted out. Maddie Matt and Tesso in the backfield. That'll put them at the thirty nine yard line. Clock down to six oh five. Davy Jones getting set for another edition of the Foam Board Show. Call him up, 419-562-2222. Toll free, out of town, one 888 24 Heavy package. Baker, spin, or excuse me, that was... Tesso. Yeah, yeah Tesso on the carry. Peyton yeah. Baker handing it off. Yep. And it was Moggy making the stop. And again, this is where, like you you said earlier, you get the young guys get the uh, get the Friday night lights, mm -hmm. the experience, play at some varsity level. Some of them for Crawford though don't look very young. Nope, they're big kids. It'll be second and fourteen. And Peyton Baker's already thrown a touchdown pass yeah. in this game. So Baker's going to turn, reverse, and hand off to Thu. Thu trying to stretch it outside. Not a lot of room there. Yard maybe two. For the freshman running back. Yeah, he's actually listed wide receiver, quarterback, running back, yep. defensive back. It's like, what's your plan with me this year, Coach? Well, I'm going to list you at everything. I have a plan, and but I'm not going to exactly, tell you. And I'm not telling anyone else. <laughs> so, we'll see how it goes. But just a freshman, 6'1", 165. We'll go with a heavy package once again. Four and a half to play. Third and 13. Baker spins, has pressure, oh. gets hit as he throws. Almost intercepted over there, but it falls innocently to the turf. That was Andrew England bearing down on Baker, and that will bring up fourth down. And Crawford will punt. Yeah. First time tonight, they're going to have to go ahead and you know, send a vote back there, punt the football. Chester Kirian will drop back. Vote standing at his 30. Chester and Kirian at their 20. Clean snap. Nice punt. And Kirian's going to let it bounce. Yep. He had time to come up and maybe return that, but. Down 41-6. Yeah, with a flag. Oh. So, 
Yep, going to be a flag down, I guess. No, nope, but there's a turnover on downs. Yeah, I, mean, I thought I thought I saw a flag, but no. So we'll take a quick timeout. We'll be right back. Mohawk with the football with three and a half to play. Back here in Sycamore, the receiver fell down. It was initially intended for 24. Andrew Woodland slipped on the route. Bogner had to scramble around. Woodland popped back up and then tried to throw it to him on the sideline, but incomplete. Yep. Had to just throw it away. Hayden Parker, the tight end over there on the sideline, pulled it out of the air. He's going to be like, Coach, you see those hands? I'm a tight end. You can get me out there anytime. I'm ready, ready to go? Yep. <laughs> Going to throw it. Bogner completes into the flats. Left side. Moving up field. Breaks one man miss. Makes two guys miss. Kirian. And close to the first down is Kirian. See where they mark him. They're going to spot it at the 34. It'll be about a yard and a half shy. Two yard shy. That'll get Kirian over 100 yards for the day receiving. Nice night for him. Yep. That's another one of those young guys you'd like to see continue to develop here for Mohawk. Bogner on the straight quarterback keep, trying to stretch it right side. Bogner oh. still moving his feet. Bogner showing some lower body strength and able to pick up the first down up to the 44-yard line. Nice carry there by Bogner. Thought he was six gonna, with two minutes to go. I thought he might sneak away for thought, a second. I was like, oh, boy, he's, he's going to get away from Got to finish the hit. Yep. Mohawk going to hurry to the line. Well, Crawford making a total wholesale switch mm -hmm. defensively. Almost didn't get players out on the field. Bogner all day to throw. Goes over the middle. Chester, head high catch. Nice delivery by Bogner. Chester on the skinny post inside Crawford territory at the 25-yard line. Pretty ball by Bogner. Oh, my gosh. Very nice. And again, nice route. You know, defense kind of adjusting to new bodies being out there. And they were caught in transition. Another first down for Mohawk. And now we'll get a whistle and a timeout. I didn't see a flag. Oh, there is. Going to be on illegal substitution. Okay. And it comes with about one minute left in the game. So, you know what? Coach Berner might be like, do a slow run on and off. I don't, I don't want them to get any more points. In yeah. This. You know, take your time. And matter of fact, he's out there. They're yelling at not Burner, one of the other coaches. Got to give him a there. chance to sub. Yep. Mohawk will throw it on first and short. Bogner pressured, reverses course. Bogner coming back the other way. Right side. Bogner stops at the 27, throws incomplete into the sideline. Wanted Woodland on an out route, not there. A 25 second incomplete pass. Yeah. That, it's just a lot of running around. And then Mohawk, they want to get that one more score in. They're down to 20 seconds left to try to get this ball in. They're going to have one shot at it here, maybe because even if it falls incomplete, they'll have to call a timeout. If yep. That's the only other chance. Kirian wide right, Woodland wide left. They're going to throw the flag route. Woodland up over the defender. Did he haul that in? He got it. In. Touchdown. Bogner to Woodland. What a throw again by Bogner. Right. Perfectly over the defender. Woodland high pointing it and bringing it in as time expires. Final score will be 41 to 12. And at least they can end it on that. Bogner with a beautiful pass. Yeah, very Woodland. nicely done. But as I said, that will close it out here in week number nine from Mohawk. As Crawford comes in on senior night and knocks down the Warriors 41 to to 12. The win moves Crawford to 8 and 1 on the season, 5 and 1 in the end 10. Mohawk now falls to 1 and 8, 1 and 5 against the conference. We'll be back for the Ken Standing Scene post game show. We'll name our McDonald's players of the game and run down final stats right after this.
toil. We sweat. We live. We breathe. We ache. And cry. And laugh. And bleed. We dance. We play. We love. We nourish. We yearn and wish and hope and cherish. We mend, we heal, we repair, we sow. We love this land, it's what we do. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. Back here on WQEL 92.7 FM, WQEL.com, and streaming live online on the OH Report. It's the Burkhart Farm Center Game of the Week, and this is the Kent Standing Seam post-game show. Colonel Crawford comes to town, takes care of business over the Mohawk Warriors. They win this thing tonight 41-12. to It was 34-0 at the end of the first half, and it was just that three-headed monster we touched on in the first, or in the pregame, Jeff, the running attack for the Eagles, the size of the Eagles, and the athleticism was just too much for the Warriors tonight. And uh, they just really did whatever they wanted offensively. Yeah, the reality is is that we talk about it a lot, is that football is a size, speed, strength game. And when one team just physically can overmatch the other one, there's not a lot they can do. You can scheme up a lot as coaches. You can try to get creative. But the reality is, is that's a really hard thing to overcome, mm-hmm. especially when those t- those players are also well coached and they know what they're doing out there. And that's what was happening here tonight. Uh, one team that's really big up front and really fast on the outside, and they got some size there as well. And the other team is young, and they're still developing, and they're still try- trying to figure it out. And unfortunately, you can really just see the mismatch throughout the game. Yeah, the size by Colonel Cro- really a foundation laid by Coach Tag, Coach yep. Bruner picking up right where he left off, and these kids have bought in, and they go out on Friday nights with the mentality that you're going to have to physically manhandle us because we're coming with everything we got, and we're going to take you, we're going to hit you head on, and that's what they did with Mohawk tonight. Mohawk knew they were going to have to match that physicality. They couldn't make any mistakes, and unfortunately, they made a mistake to start the game with an interception, some timely penalties. They had a, a touchdown that could have uh, got rid of the warning clock at the end of the first half, but taken away by a penalty. And it's just the youth. The yeah. youth of Mohawk showed a little bit at times tonight, and Colonel Crawford showing their down. No question about it. No, ultimately, when it comes down to it, you're looking at two teams that are just at different places right now. One is sort of still developing. They got a lot of young guys. They're only going to graduate five seniors this year, and they're gonna they're gonna bring back a lot of these players um, into the future. But you know, the other team in Colonel Crawford is, is really focusing on right now. Uh, they know they've got a team that is uh, doing some pretty good damage, and it's really ultimately just about making some improvements as the season goes along. Um, you know. They had one game that was pretty rough against Kerry. But you know what? The reality is they lost to him last year and then beat him in the playoffs. So, you know what? That's what the mentality is in the locker room is they're saying, we're just going to keep getting better. And maybe by the time we see these teams with the playoffs hit, we're going to be ready to take them head on. Absolutely. They win it tonight, 41-12. to We'll go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be back with more of the Ken Standing Scene postgame show right after this.
We toil. We sweat. We live. We breathe. We ache. And cry. And laugh. And bleed. We dance. We play. We love. We nourish. We yearn and wish and hope and cherish. We mend, we heal, we repair, we sow. We love this land, it's what we do. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. We're here with the Danners towing and recycling MVP, uh, Connor McMichael. Six carries, 145 on the ground, two touchdowns, and you had one catch for 27 yards. Kind of just touch a little bit on what was your mindset going into this game. Obviously, it's late in the season, but you guys are really clicking on all cylinders. You know, I knew this was a big game for us. You know, we just came off a big win from Winford. Like, we didn't want to slow down in this game. So our mindset was just next game, you know. We just kept going on, and this was Mohawk's a good opponent. We just didn't overlook them. We took it play by play, and you know. The, Obviously, you and Micah Thomas both lead a, a one-two punch in the backfield. Kind of just touch a little bit on what what it means to have both you guys really hitting on the ground solid. You know, I love him, man. He's like my brother to me. You know, he's my he's older. He's a senior. I'm a sophomore. He taught me a lot, and then. He, he runs up the middle hard. I run outside more. We just compliment each other. You know, people have to stop him from the middle, and then I just run outside, and then people have to stop me from outside. Then it leaves open the middle. It just works out. Obviously, a lot of people would see this as a, a kind of a trap game almost. You're one, one, two weeks out from the end of the season. Um, kind of just touch on what your team's mindset is going to continue the season, really push through this week. You know, we're just – looking game by game we're looking ahead like game by game like we want to you know keep pushing on we want to keep winning obviously <laughs> take it play by play game by game you know just keep winning obviously here at oh report we like to give shout outs uh just look into the camera and give a shout out to whoever you like uh i gotta shout out my family the backfield the receivers my brother you know the o-lineman spence luke levi Jude and Lane, got to love them. The backups, too. I love everyone on my team, the coach staff. Awesome. Thank you. Great game. Thank you. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. Tonight, 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for turning in to Colonel Crawford and Mohawk. This is Jory Hollenbeck, your director speaking. Just wanted to thank all of our sponsors again for making our broadcast live and free to all the viewers. And we are closing it out here from Mohawk High School in Sycamore. Don't forget to tune in to the Friday Night Pigskin at 11.30 tonight. But as for Justin and myself, we got to get out of here and head back to Mansfield. So... Good night.